Okay, good morning, Commissioner Ed Rothstein, District 5, February 9th, uh, soon to be Valentine's Day. Just a reminder to myself in preparation for Valentine's Day. Um, as we always do prior, let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, I'll kick it off this morning. First, uh, regarding a moment of silence, um, I was thinking of a lot of folks that are still in harm's way whether it's man-made or environment, there's thousands and thousands that have perished from the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. So let's wish strength and courage to those that are still there and mourning. Uh, and may all those that perish be a blessing. Um, their memories be a blessing. Uh, you know, Ukraine's Ukraine. I'll, t I'll tell you, every time I, I, I do a pledge to the flag, it reminds me of just how good we are <laughs> and how fortunate and mm. how blessed. So, Absolutely. Um, a couple of real quick things. I uh, attended the um, groundbreaking uh, or kickoff to the uh, Biz Challenge. And the Biz Challenge... Uh, is a Carroll County Shark Tank <coughs> approach for young entrepreneurs, um, young not necessarily being in age, but young being in their, their startup. And the finale is in August. Last year's winner received $25,000 in cash and prizes. And it's a Botana gal, her name's Hannah. She's on Main Street in, um, in Sykesville. Um, We've been very successful uh, in doing this. I think this is the uh, 13th year in doing this, and uh, it's um, run by the Chamber of Commerce. I'm always motivated uh, to attend and uh, see who participates and just the, the cool ideas that are coming out of somebody's head from concept to actual development. And uh, our partnership with the community college <clears throat> and with the SBDC, part of a special, uh, excuse me, small business administration, um, you know, is, and, and the uh, Miller Center uh, over at the college um, has just been wonderful. So it's just a great opportunity to, uh, to attend and participate and see what's happening. Um, and let me leave it at that for now. So, uh, why don't we move from my right and go to the left? So, Commissioner Karen. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> just, I'll be brief. Uh, so, Tuesday evening, I had my first town hall meeting at the Mount Airy Senior Center, and I want to personally thank the staff there for their support, uh, Angie and Ann and Dave. I, I'm extremely grateful, and the host of other volunteers that also make that center run well uh, and serve. That really, that really tri-county area because we're right there on the border. Um, I also want to thank some of the, uh, we had some county staff there and we had a lot of elected officials, the mayor of Mount Airy, some of the town council members, Chief Robinson, and uh, Sheriff uh, Jim DeWeese actually spoke to the crowd for a good 20 minutes, there he is, uh, about the status of, of policing in the area. And I also want to thank the uh, Mount, Airy Fire, uh, Mount Airy Police Chief, Chief Reitz, for, for being there as well. And of course, I want to thank all the District 4 residents that attended. We, we had quite a crowd. It was practically overflow, which is a good thing, of course. And the topics and comments you might expect were things of dealing with the Maryland Blueprint, which is going to be very topical, uh, growth and development within the county everywhere and how it affects everybody, uh, particularly some of the school redistricting questions that are out there. Uh, just questions, uh, still being looked at very closely and different solutions as well. 
solar that was one uh, and um, so what's going on with particular properties within district four and in particular within the town itself which is a municipality but uh, great questions great concerns one of the things that I made sure I did during that meeting was make sure that people know how to get a hold of their elected officials so we went through emails we went through websites and an ongoing effort to make sure that people know how to reach out to us and let us know how they feel it's important it's important that they're paying attention to their local elected officials they're paying attention to those elections themselves because they matter so much so my uh, my brief comment to everybody that attended is just thank you very much uh, continue to pay attention and uh, keep those emails coming we appreciate it thank you cool Commissioner Kyler I've uh, met with uh, two different groups of Cub Scouts now and I want to encourage uh, <laughs> any groups but any any scouting groups that want to meet um, one I met at their meeting one came here and I'm open to either way it just has to fit in a schedule um, I've met and heard from uh, solar people both sides of the fence and I'm more willing to talk to any of those uh, Commissioner Rustin and I went to MACO yesterday mm -hmm. in Annapolis um, I'm on the Education Committee you're on tax yes and yeah, yeah. committee and then we have a regular meeting and I want to thank our delegation mm -hmm. um, every week so far um, we've been able to meet with one or two mm -hmm. of them and have discussions that are very meaningful and uh, they uh, very much care about what the people in Carroll County think about what's going on in Annapolis so again if uh, reach out to them reach out to one of us and we'll share the word with them um, they 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 really do have our backs down in Annapolis and they have a tough job with what they do I'm hoping to go to a veteran celebration committee meeting today it depends on how, how our meetings turn out and what what there's time and then uh, I, people I think know that I'm somewhat interested in wrestling uh, tonight <laughs> man Val wrestles in the uh, I guess it's considered the quarterfinals mm -hmm. they've changed the format for dual meet states but they're wrestling at Hammond tonight and and have a good possibility of winning it's uh, you never know that's why they do the matches mm -hmm. but uh, and I know South Carroll's doing well I know some of the other county high schools involved and then they're being to individual and uh, I've also seen uh, a drama and a, uh, a choral concert and a band concert and it's just uh, the schools the extracurriculars do so much and I encourage everybody with extracurriculars if you really want to go to an elite college and you have a 4.0 and great SATs they've got to do the tiebreakers with something and it might be that you were an Aqualite in church you don't you don't know what's going to beat it but please do the extra items and and it'll get you someplace and it was interesting with the uh, Cub Scouts I try to ask them obviously they ask me questions I try to ask them some on why they got in it and what they want to get out of it and I'm amazed with the number of relatively young Cub Scouts that their goal is to be an Eagle Scout which that's awesome and uh, I hope most of them make it and that about covers me for the no, week. that's great and great advice also with the schools um, also uh, talking about the legislation district 5 legislative night is February 20th down in um, Annapolis so all that is those that want to attend uh, mr. Fowler if you can provide details when you come on up if you have them uh, um, but it is open to our community to attend uh, the district 5 um, night and also uh, District 42 Alpha, Senator West, and um, uh, Delegate Stanko will also be there uh, for that as well. So just remember. And, and they'd like RSVPs if possible. Yes. But if you don't, uh, they're not going to throw you out. Right. <laughs> Commissioner Vigliotti. Did you want to mention something about the public hearing first? Or we do well, that public hearing. on the 23rd? No. 
I'll, right. I'll do that later. Okay. Okay. Right. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, so I'll, I'll be very brief this morning. Uh, this week I had the opportunity to take a tour of the Ark of Carroll County, uh, graciously hosted by Don Rowan. I hope I'm pronouncing her last name uh, correctly, Jen Most. Um, and it, it was the first time that I was able to see firsthand uh, you know, what goes on there and the, the amazing kind of work that uh, is being done for those who, are, uh, you know, uh, those who have learning disabilities or are disabled in some way. Uh, and I think it is a, uh, it's a unique and it is a wonderful thing that we have in our county. Uh, the other thing is that uh, last night I had the opportunity to attend uh, the Board of Education meeting and uh, you know, certainly heard firsthand in no uncertain terms the challenges that Blueprint is uh, uh, compelling the Board of Education to face and by extent us as well. Um, and uh, you know, it, 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 uh, these are going to be very difficult and challenging budgetary times ahead. Um, and I think it's important that you know, we keep that uh, you know, abreast of the public that, that you know, these are incredibly difficult choices that we're going to be having to, to make in the coming months. Uh, and that's it for me for today. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fowler, why don't you come on up? Morning. Morning, Commissioners. Um, Morning. First thing, no, I don't have the details on District 5. No, I yeah. haven't seen oh. anything yet. Space is really challenged down there, so I'll, I'll check with them and see where it's going to be. And then Okay. If you can, I, I know I know they advertise it. I just don't have the details. But if we get with Meg or someone, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. thanks. So uh, I can change up again a little bit um, in your package. What I gave you, and I probably should have been doing this all along, but I will from now on, is give you the list of bills that Mako is discussing the Wednesday before this meeting. And you'll see the positions that Mako is taking on those. Um, what are we on? 19, 18 pages on this. So we could be a long time talking about each one. So I thought I'd just present them to you. And if you go through here and you see ones of particular interest, we can certainly discuss them. Uh, but I thought today I'd, I'd concentrate on one bill that I think is probably unique and very important. Um, I don't think I haven't seen a bill in some time that has such a I think a wide-ranging cultural and social impact um, as the cannabis reform bill. So it's it's 88 pages covers a lot of ground. Uh, the sponsors have been talking about this, and and in their remarks, um, it's not intended to be a revenue generator. Its intent is really to, um, to eliminate or significantly reduce the illegal market and provide some type of restitution uh, to communities that have been adversely impacted by cannabis enforcement, uh, really the, the, the war on drugs, if you will, and to reduce incarceration. So you might remember last, uh, last session, uh, bill was passed that changed the, uh, the, the legal structure, decriminaliz it was a decriminalization bill. Uh, so this sort of sets forth the, the program as it goes forward. Um, they are renaming the Alcohol and Tobacco Commission with the addition of cannabis. And within that commission is a newly created Office of Social Equity. So you're going to see that equity piece throughout the, the bill and, th and it really infuses its intent. Um, there are two licensing regimes within this, the standard license and the micro license. And then within those, you've got licenses for growers, processors, and retailers. I thought it focused on the retailers because I think that's the, the part that will, I think people will see. So in the standard licensing for retail, they are essentially storefronts. And they are 300 licenses will be granted statewide. The micro licenses are a lesser amount of licenses statewide, but the, interestingly, they are for delivery services. So weed on wheels, if you will. Right? Mm. Uh, product testing and an emphasis on the the 
I say health, the, the, I guess the quality of the product, make sure that it's not harmful beyond what, <laughs> what the obvious things would be. Uh, you do have some power within this as local governments. You can establish reasonable zoning requirements, uh, but you can establish zoning or other requirements that would unduly burden <laughs> the business. Okay. You may determine what, uh, the revenue, which we'll discuss in a moment, that you receive you can use that at your discretion. You may not impose a tax on your own. You can't prohibit deliveries that come into your county from other jurisdictions. You can, uh, you can regulate or up to prohibit consumption in the on-site facilities in your county. If you do permit that, there are guidelines and restrictions around that. There are advertising and marketing restrictions. Obviously, uh, 21 and above is the only legal aspect of this. So I think, I, it, I think of how the websites that you go to regarding alcohol, that all you have to do is simply attest that you're over 21. Um, I suspect it'll be the same kind of thing, which I don't think is very effective, frankly. Um, one of the big concerns has always been the HR aspect of this. How, how do you treat employees with this? It's not like alcohol, where there are scientific and, and verifiable levels of intoxication and and through you know blood level and that sort of thing um, this is much a much different substance and stays in the blood for 30 days but doesn't how long does intoxication occur that so those questions are all very difficult to to measure but you do have some ability to affect how employees uh, perform in the workplace so you can discipline an employee or a contractor for obviously ingesting at the workplace or working while impaired. That's as far as the legislation goes, impaired. So how is impaired defined? It's not in the bill. Exactly. Not in the bill. You can terminate an employee, and this is taken directly from the bill, engaging in any task while under the influence of cannabis when doing so would constitute negligence or professional malpractice. Again, who defines that? You can refuse to hire, which is, this is, I can't square this. Um, you can refuse to hire someone if a positive drug test is, is, is done according to established policies but you can't necessarily terminate someone for that. And I think <clears throat> questions about the CDL, it's not explicit in there, um, but you can't use federal law, which th it's a crime, so you can't use federal law against an, uh, against an employee. So you can't say that if there, and I don't know this, but if there, is federal, if there are federal regulations around a CDL, license and it and it prescribes that you can't be under the influence or, or can't use it or it can't be present in a drug test you can't use that law in determining how you you treat so I don't know quite how that's all squares but that's that's how the bill is written the revenue piece that's always been a big question mark too uh, Again, the sponsors say they, this, they don't want this to be a revenue generator and they gotta set the revenue so that this, the product is not priced to actually encourage the illegal market. Now, some economists would say whatever price you set is the ceiling and the Ill illegal market will move below that price. That's, that's for another discussion. Uh, so, the state will impose a tax. 
it starts at 6% and increases each year and tops out at 10% of fiscal year 28. Of that, 30% goes to something called the Community Reinvestment and Repair Fund. So that, that goes to the, the restitution piece we're, we're talking about. There is a local tax. It's minuscule at this point. It's 1.5% of the revenue that is collected in your jurisdiction. It's going to be very small. Um, one, of the, one of the things MAKA will be seeking in this is an increase to local revenue. You're the one that's going to be dealing with the impacts in, in your jurisdiction. There are also contributions to the blueprint. Uh, begins in fiscal year 23 at 9.2% and tops out at 12.1% at fiscal year and beyond. You really and mean 23? This year? This current fiscal year? Yes. Oh, okay. Thanks. Sorry. Yes. Uh, I'm going to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's okay. correct. Yeah. Is that hard it doesn't, to, it that's doesn't hard align to with, uh, right. with the other. Yeah. Right. Um, this is listed as emergency legislation for the protection of health and welfare of the citizens of the state. So it will be enacted upon a yay vote of three-fifths of each chamber. And that is essentially, if, uh, if all the Democrats remain in their veto-proof majority, which they are above right now, um, if they keep enough to remain in that veto-proof majority, it will move through. Leadership is, has this is going to pass. Let's just leave it at that. This will pass in some form. Uh, it'll be debated very, very vigorously, I'm sure, in the in the coming weeks. But it will pass. In some when form. do we expect it to come up for a vote? Uh, yeah, no hearing dates. Uh, excuse me. No, the, I think the House hearing date is scheduled pretty soon. 17th seems to stick out okay. in my mind, but I'll, I'll, I'll follow up on that. Thursday. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions on that particular subject? Just, I guess, as a general question, you'd mentioned that that certain of these things were, you know, who defines what. So, for example, if somebody is working for this agency for the for the the county and they're under the influence, and uh, uh, do we exercise a prerogative to? strictly define all of these things ourselves before the state because obviously this is going to be an ongoing process with the state where it's it's you know there's nothing the state passes that they don't ultimately continue to rework and refine and redo over time so while we have the opportunity do we have the the uh, uh, authority to be able to say this is how we are going to define it for the time that we have it well, i think the next step will which follows all legislation is the development of regulations so regulations are developed and then put out for public comment. So that'll be the point at which you'll know <clears throat> what the regulations say about how it interprets what's in the legislation. So within the year, I suppose, you'll see that. Because in, in my mind, I mean, dealing with this in any capacity, whether it's the definitions or whether it's you know, when it comes to zoning or whatever the case is, I think we need to be... Uh, pretty proactive with this and we need to be as speedy as possible in attempting to figure out how we're going to deal with this before I'd rather deal with the I'd rather be you know proactive about this than reactive and dealing with something after the fact so, and, I mean, and, just, I, and I know that you have nothing to right. do I'm just saying for the for discussion here with us that that you know I, I would I would want to move on this as soon as humanly possible for us to look into whatever it is that we're able to do to curtail this so. I think the challenge though is regardless of our opinion, um, you know, uh, it's only going to carry so much weight in, you know, what we're allowed and not allowed to do. Um, you know, I, there, there's definitely a sentiment of, I would expect Carroll County opinion, you know, or not a sentiment, but a, a majority of the opinion that leans one way as opposed to another. Uh, but it, this is going to happen and well, once right. it does happen um, we're going to have to work through the laws that are going to be put in place and I don't think we're going to have the ability to um, to make many adjustments I don't think um, but it's going to be interesting uh, right, but what, what there, there's still a lot of unknowns and that's that's unfortunate the whole 
how do you know when somebody is under the influence when you can't test them you know I mean maybe a sobriety test of some sort but you know that's gonna be a very difficult issue I mean it you know the new motto of the state ought to be if you don't like it too bad because that's what this bill is all about. I mean, what's interesting when you look at this particular bill, at states that have already gone down this road, particularly California, they are having to take a step back because they made all these same mistakes. I mean, it's all over, you know, it was in the Wall Street Journal this week. Mm -hmm. right. In particular, cannot prohibit deliver deliveries from other jurisdictions. That is incredibly problematic. That is such a glaring uh, problem with this. I mean, I have problems with the whole thing, basically, but. Uh, you know, again, I appreciate the briefing on it, but as a couple of commissioners already mentioned, how how can we be proactive? Well, I mean, we need to be, but unfortunately, it's all about being reactive at this point. Yeah, it's not it's not untypical for legislation to be vague, and for it to be tightened up in regulation. Uh, obviously, you can't have 24 different interpretations, and actually, municipalities come in here because. They are considered a local government. So what is it, 150 plus municipalities plus the 24 jurisdictions can't be interpreting this individually, right? So, so if we look at Carroll County internal, then you're looking at nine <coughs> with the county and the municipalities. It would be great to be able to tell our own story. Um, the question really comes to, will we have the opportunity to do that uh, in a legal manner or not? Um, you know, through any ordinances or decisions we make from here. I don't think that's going to be possible. Sounds I mean, like, it sounds like you'll have control over, to some extent, over zoning, as you did with the medical cannabis, okay. but only to some extent. They were some, some significant I'm worried restraint. about ingestion more than zoning. Again, they got you there, too, because as long as you, there's not an un, you don't know, unduly burden, yeah. Can't, can't undo whatever that means. Yeah, that's exactly. exactly. So, right. So, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'll stop. I just. I mean, it, but they were pretty heavy. I'm sorry. Restrictions well, on what restrictions the counties could make and towns could make on the zoning for medical cannabis as well. Yeah, and that that part I I got, and I understand the 300 statewide, the licensing. You know, I'm more concerned about the ingestion. I'm more concerned about the impact it's going to have on our community. And, you know, when our children are being raised and seeing their families and parents ingesting this and saying, oh, that this is the right thing to do, or this right. is okay, um, and then get behind a wheel of a car and drive without having the ability to be tested of whether they're under influence, that, that bothers me. I mean, that's, you know. Uh, right, and it, and it is a... Yeah. It is a sociocultural thing, you know, and we're we're in a situation where we're trying to find ways to, to move beyond the entire drug issue, and here we are, you know, as a state saying, okay, well, let's let's make it open, let's let's open right. up even more. So it's, you know, it, it is a uh, you know, it's kind of like what you said about trying to square a circle, even within you know, the components of this, and looking at the issue as a whole. It's it's you know, you're talking at two different points. You know, you're you're making two different sets of policies, and and again, how do you you know to use your phrase square the circle? Mm -hmm. uh, there is a there is a it does address driving mm -hmm. in the bill. I didn't I didn't put it in the briefing, but uh, and the way it's worded is there's nothing in the bill that that suggests that you can get in a car and drive under the influence. Yeah, that's not the exact wording, but essentially it addresses your, you can't drive under the influence, can't operate a motor vehicle under the influence. Oh. Yeah, and I think unfortunately, they're, they're so naive about things, and, and that was a good point. Um, I don't see where any states have really learned from the mistakes of the states that already did it and that, that's so unfortunate and the other thing I, I'd like to comment on it'll curb the black market maybe um, I know so many people using medical m marijuana and I'll ask what the process is like and they go I gave up on the process I can get it more quickly cheaper and better quality by just buying it the way I always did and uh, they're going to fight that battle a little bit, too. And then, again, my concern, um, particularly gummies and stuff, uh, 
they're, they're available to kids and uh, and uh, a pinhead of uh, fentanyl will kill them. And, and it's going to be hard for employers. Uh, I don't know what we've done. Uh, the last place I worked, we had a division in Colorado, and we kept that if you didn't pass the drug pass, you couldn't be hired. Even though it's legal to use this, we didn't hire people. Now, sooner or later, you've got to change that. And unfortunately, on driving, you can't test. So it's nice to say you can't do it, but right. it, it's going to be right. hard to prove that you did. But it, it's uh, and and like yeah. you said, this we need to react to this because it's going to happen. And you know, we we got to uh, develop a recipe that'll be suitable for our community. Um, whether, like you said, socio-cultural, um, we may, may not have the ability to, you know, put it in ordinance, you know, above and beyond, but um, you know, we can continue to highlight the importance of uh, recognizing its impact, um, you know, in the schools and, uh, you know, in everywhere else. Um, I don't want to say we're holier than thou when this comes, but, you know, uh, we do know that it does have impact. And I, I do wish there would be lessons learned from the communities or the states that have put this in place. And I think there's plenty of lessons learned. I don't know them. I haven't really done that research but I, I would expect there are and we could probably take all of them and create a better model than what's being uh, shoved down our throats by three-fifths of a majority um, and that's my two cents I mean, Commissioner Guerin mentioned California the one the takeaway I and from California was they priced it to a point where the illegal market just uses that as the ceiling yeah and it, it flourishes and there's a bill in that won't allow law enforcement to take any steps if they smell cannabis coming from a car yet you're not it's not legal to drive under the influence there's so many right disparities in here yeah. um, that that really have to get worked out and and really every institution across the state has to be looking at this and seeing what oh, yeah. effect it has on them it's not just uh, you know yeah. elected officials and yeah, businesses they, yeah the, the, the secondary tertiary effects of this whether it's with the schools or it's with uh, the you know the police and the sheriff's department and um, the work that they're gonna have to do um, just yeah I it, it's a lot <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> and huge. unfortunately that's it's the only huge. word I can come up with uh, but I, I do wish that uh, they would take lessons learned from a lot of other communities like California or others and say, yeah, let's not do it this way or let's put the, the bookends on this. But Well, you know, the locomotive is heading down the tracks. Uh, the locomotive's heading down the tracks. Hard to stop. Right. <laughs> so, so, so we'll, okay. we'll uh, continue to <clears throat> keep you updated on how this progresses. Appreciate that. Um, um, yeah, just a couple of other things. So. The Northeast Waste Disposal Authority bill was heard yesterday in the House. Uh, it was interesting. It seemed like, well, first of all, I thought that the sponsor was a little coy. He, he emphasized the sunset review aspect of the bill, which, which it is and which is appropriate, looking at these quasi-governmental uh, agencies periodically to make sure they're operating true to their mission um, is, is perfectly appropriate. Um, he did not mention that the bill also obligates DLS to craft legislation to merge the authority into MES. So that was sort of left out of the discussion. Um, Anne Arundel uh, County opposed it in written testimony. Harford was there and opposed it in person. Um, Mako put in their, their amendments. We submitted ours. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is no Senate cross-file bill which is interesting because Brian Feldman is the chair of the committee and he was on the commission, so he has not filed a cross-file bill. Um, can't read the tea leaves on that, but it doesn't sound like maybe he's as big a cheerleader. It seemed like the, the uh, proponents of the bill were mostly anti-incinerator people, and that's part of what the authority is tasked to do, is waste to energy and incinerators. Now, they don't do that anymore. 
as we've talked about before. Exactly. That's not going to happen in the future. So you could simply write that out of the statute if you wanted. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, were, were they just trying to make a statement? I mean. Well, they, the incinerator, particularly in Montgomery County, right. there's, that's been a hotbed for quite a while, and, and Baltimore City as well, for that mm -hmm. matter. But, but Baltimore City has some issues with waste disposal, and not everybody in, in the city is opposed to that incinerator. So uh, it, it was hard to gauge how the committee mm -hmm. felt about that. Uh, so I'll be watching the subcommittee. That's where a lot of the real nitty-gritty substance will be discussed. So we'll see. And then, and then if it does get out of committee, assuming it's in its same posture, there'll be an opportunity in the Senate to, to discuss it further. Uh, also, the public facilities bond bill, that's always important, but it's also sort of a, a, a rote deal. So that was yesterday. No, no questions came up. Uh, the request to raise a procurement limit is with the delegation. They've submitted it to drafting. There are some questions that I've gotten already about how is this really going to work. So I'm going to meet with a procurement officer and go through some of that so I'll be able to answer their questions very thoroughly. Um, and again, I'll just point to the bill list that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, some, there's some important bills in here. Uh, we've discussed some of them mm -hmm. uh, previously here. Uh, you'll see the positions, and again, if you have any, if you need any more details or have any questions, I can fill you in on those. The, um, from yesterday, there was a, a lot of discussion in the uh, subcommittee regarding the um, uh, solar tax um, incentives and uh, task a task force, force a mm -hmm. task force to establish. Um, Mako's taking no position on this, and you and I talked about this. Uh, we like the idea of the task force. Um, what we're learning and continuing to learn with Mako, Maryland Associated Counties, to be consistent when they go to um, to the committees, you know, uh, in the Capitol. And this is one of those consistencies. We like the task force overall, but keeping it no position it doesn't mean you know that it, it, it's a good thing and it's going to be a very inclusive task force uh from folks from mako from mml from um you know all different walks of the aisle uh and i think it may dovetail really well <clears throat> with the potential moratorium that is on the table um so let's just keep our eyes on that yeah, that's Senate Bill 469, Task Force to Study Solar Tax Incentives. So right now, there, there's a wide range of tax incentives to solar. They're kind of all over the place. Senator Elfrith uh, is, is sort of, she has a, a lot of cachet on environmental issues. And you'll see that it, uh, it, it talks about rooftop. Now, it only affects uh, commercial generation. Right. So, but it's it's again it's it's rooftops, because she also doesn't like to see these directed toward productive agricultural land. Uh, so, to try to get a cohesive policy tax policy directed at these is really the intent. And as you say, Mako will typically only weigh in on a task force if it doesn't have the proper representation right and this one does appear to so and i think it was last year where we focused maybe a couple years ago to get the rural counties engaged in this task force you know and other task force because sometimes we're left out you know anything west of 29 or east of the uh, bwi parkway you know it seems like uh we're forgotten so and on this issue that's really where the impact is felt right so we, we want to have a say so okay but um, back to the uh procurement limit mm -hmm. um i'd be curious i'm sure one of the questions you've gotten already is going from twenty five thousand to fifty thousand what percentage does that limit and from my perspective i think we'd love to know what answer you get to that if it's if it cuts 10 percent maybe it's not worth wasting everybody's time if it cuts 
have, then maybe it is. But mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's one of the things you're going to look into, right? Yes. Well, yeah. One of the questions they had the in the previous iteration of the bill was, all right, so how many projects now fall into that category? And then how many, let's say over the last year, would have fallen into this new category, right? And so, and the other questions are around, does the process change? Uh, is it still, you know, are they, are they budgeted items? Are these within the budget? Those kinds of questions. So, yeah, I'll be digging that. And I'll pass back to you what I get. Thank you, and thanks for getting us around Annapolis. <laughs> Someday I won't get lost. So uh, any other uh, questions or comments on bills that have been presented to us today? Nope. Okay, and I know you're always available. So always available. appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Okay, let's, uh, Ms. Ursler and team come up and talk about the payment of loan from the Carroll, from the County Commissioners of Carroll County regarding the uh, Exploration Commons, I would expect. Good morning. 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 So as you all know, uh, we opened Exploration Commons a little over a year ago, and um, we were able to open it under some provisional licensing and all, uh, but the project was not actually finished. <clears throat> we were working with county buildings uh, to make sure all the the contractor pieces were done and there were a few things that that weren't finished uh, those items were finished about three to four weeks ago so the project is now actually completed finally um, and the county was generous enough to loan the library sort of a construction loan for us while we were working on the project so we were able to, to stay within um, what we thought was going to be a reasonable timeline was supposed to be eight months and turned out to be somewhere in the neighborhood of two years. Um, the, the lessons learned by building during COVID. So um, at this point, now that the last invoices have been paid, we'd like to reconcile the, the loan piece of it with the county. Um, and there's a couple different aspects to this. Uh, there is a MOU that's on the books from I'm not quite sure when. Uh, Ted might have that information that says that the library's fund balance can't be spent without the permission of both the commissioners and the library board. Um, so we're here before you today to first of all request permission to actually spend the fund balance we have. Um, and secondly, we'd like to request that the county waive the interest that the loan has accrued to date um, with the understanding that, that the delays were not the library's fault, um, that they were <coughs> extenuating circumstances due to COVID, due to issues with the contractor, due to issues with supply chain and, and, and so forth. Um, we just felt like that that was an ask we'd like to make. Um, it feels rather punitive to pay interest on something we simply weren't allowed to pay off, um, not do, through any fault of our own. So that's sort of our two asks for this, for this morning um, and be more than happy to, to answer any specific questions that you have as well. Okay. Um, any questions up front? Uh, I guess a couple or at least two <clears throat> broad questions. And, and if I'm not quite understanding this correctly, please, you know, feel free to correct me. Um, uh, so you're saying that you know, permission hadn't been granted to pay the loan back previously, am I? There were some outstanding issues that the contractor needed to make right. And until they made them right, we were holding the final invoice. The, the county buildings, I want to make sure I get the right department, had asked that we not pay that last invoice until those items were checked off. Gotcha. Um, and in, it was a small invoice. I think it wound up being about twenty six or 27000 It was just the last bit of change orders and that sort of thing. But it was something to keep the contractor invested in the project and, and get those things finished. And Thank you. And, and about how much interest has been accrued at this point, do you know? Thirty thousand six eighteen sixty three. So thirty thousand six eighteen. Sixty three. Sixty three. Thank you. And I'm imagining that if you were, if you had to pay this, where does the money come from to pay that that interest? The we we raised money for the project. The money to pay off this part of the loan, however, has been operating money that we've basically squirreled aside to to, to pay it off. So it's coming out of our our fund balance. 
and that's oh. money that you might be able to otherwise use elsewhere. Oh, absolutely. Rather than, okay. Yeah. That, that, my questions, I'm good, thank you. Squirreled away? We squirreled it away, yes. Um. We, we saved our pennies. <clears throat> How much is in the fund balance right now? Uh, $624,000. And you want authorization to use the fund balance? We need authorization to use the fund balance, yes. To do what? To pay off the loan to the county. So basically we're paying you back with your own money, but So you want to you want to pay off 500,000 not 530,000. Correct? We'd really like to not pay off anything, but yes. Yes, we, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If we're, if we're going to be you really like honest about it, but yes, we really would that. would like to not pay that interest if we don't have to. I don't know. It it something just doesn't seem to fit in my mind, especially when you just said it's our money. We're paying back our own money. Well, the the money that we have in the fund balance is money that accrues year over year when we don't spend all of the budgeted money that we receive from the county and the state and the fund that we, you know, the funds that we raise internally. Renting meeting rooms, copiers, fundraising, and that sort of thing. Um, it's a small amount every year. Uh, most of what we don't use winds up going back into the budget for something else the following year. But there's always a little bit that we put aside as a rainy day fund. And it's very small. Like, but Is that rainy day fund, I mean, is, are we talking, is this all county money? And is the 30,000 interest I would county say money? the predominance of it is, yeah. We're, we're looking at about 90% of it being county money that, that we've just not spent year over year. And we started saving it when we did this project for this project, knowing that fundraising could be difficult. Uh, we hadn't anticipated trying to do it during a pandemic. That was fun. Um, but nonetheless, the cash is in hand to pay it to pay it off. But yes, most of it is money that we just have year over year been saving. Hmm. Ted, did you want to share? Yeah, on this idea that you know it's count county money coming back. Um, the library has basically two sources of revenue for, for their operating budget, the county and the state. Uh, we are almost all of it, and the portion that comes from the state has historically been used for purchasing materials, so books and DVDs and CDs and, and things like that. So in a practical way, uh, the accumulation of fund balance is county funding that didn't get spent. So when Andrea said, we'd be paying you back with your money, it's not our money at this point, but it's money that came from you. So with that said, why would we allow for them to waive the interest at this time? Well, that's a different question. OK. Um, Can I, and, and well, piggyback I, I, in that question, were there costs for the county and the taxpayers in doing this loan and holding this loan and is there a reason if it's justifiable to say well we don't need the 30 but maybe we need half of it or you know what were our costs what and not to piggyback what well it had been an opportunity cost money we would have had that we could have invested uh i i don't have any number to tell you though and it can go back to the library in budget deliberation for FY24, right? Say that again. If we don't waive interest, you know, it comes back to our our budget or our, mm -hmm. you know, money. You would be paid to your operating budget. Mm -hmm. And we can then have those conversations with the library or with them on how to use that money for FY24, correct? I don't mean to be looking through you, Andrea. I'm no, that's there, okay. I, so. I, I get it. Okay, for, first, we've got two, two different things here I think you need to think about differently. One is permission to use the fund balance to pay off the loan to, to the county. That's, that's really just an administrative decision. Right. Uh, the waiving of the interest is really unrelated to, to the first thing. Right. And... Um, 
you know, the arrangement was there would be interest paid. Uh, Andrea's argument is they wouldn't have accumulated this much interest if they had been able to move ahead more quickly on paying, paying off the bill. Um, that interest is not something that we built into our budgeting. We weren't counting on that as a revenue or any, anything like that. Uh, like I said, you know, it is money we would have had invested somewhere, so we, so we lost something. But the decision there is really just totally in the hands of the board to say, yes, we're willing to forgive it, no, we're not willing to, or as Commissioner Kyler said, we'll forgive half of it or, you know, whatever you want to do. And it really, I don't believe it has any significant implications for a future budget. Are we setting a precedence for other loans, or is this pretty much a unique situation? That was my next question. Um, we don't have a lot of loans. The biggest thing we do is with the fire companies, but that's basically just a pass-through. They, they are paying the, the, the bills. There's a few other places, but um, we've done other things at other times. I hate to call this a precedent because we've made other decisions. Okay, and that's fair. You make decisions based on specific cases. Um, the uh, <clears throat> would this complete the loan? This five hundred thousand. You're asking me, or yes, I'm asking you. Okay, I'm, I no, apologize. This, this would complete the loan. We borrowed five hundred thousand, and that's right. the amount we would pay back. Jenny, did you will have something that you wanted to share? I think Ted, pretty much. I was just. I had the same concern of the president's that. Kyler just come on come up sorry. to the mic I apologize sorry I have the same concerns that Commissioner Kyler just said that it would set presidents that we are waiving interest on these loans and we have fire companies we have other outside agencies that have these loans that we have not waived interest on prior but that is entirely your decision as have we board. waived interest on others it's my understanding there's a buffer for some of the fire departments that, that there's an allowance for, the, for some of the interest. Oh, hold on one no, second. There's not. Okay. Um, they get a rate based on, depending on um, what the interest rate is at that time, and then they have to repay once we issue bonds. So we do not, um, they are required to pay the interest back in full with the principal as well. I think part of our argument for ha asking to have the interest waived is that until we paid the last invoice on construction, we were not able to make an offer to pay off the loan. And since we had no control over when that last invoice was given to us for payment, we really couldn't control the interest that was accruing. Yeah. What portion? of the total time of the loan was that waiting to pay the final thing? Uh, it wasn't the whole portion, obviously, it was, but yeah. half, quarter? It was about eight months. Eight months. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's a significant portion of it. Um, so I think it's, I think it's worth noting that, that as, a, as executive director of the Carroll County Public Library, I would expect you to come and ask to waive the interest. <laughs> I think you're probably doing your job at that Thank point. Thank you. Um, I think, but, uh, detaching the two is might be the, a reasonable approach and then trying to figure out how to square that up at a, at, a, at a later date in terms of the interest I don't know if we want to be doing both at in the same motion for certain but uh, I'm not sure how I feel about waiving the interest and if maybe we need to take a look at that a little bit more to ensure that we are not creating some uh, some unnecessary yeah. precedent I, I, I do understand the precedent piece but this particular building cycle was highly unique. I, I yeah, I, I, mean, I have no doubt at all in that, and 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 not being able to re, repay a loan. I mean, you know, if you couldn't, you know, if you own a mortgage and you want to recast your loan and you can't, that doesn't seem fair. You're paying all this interest and you have the money to repay it and bring down your principal, and it doesn't seem like a, a fair alternative for anybody. Uh, I completely understand that. The, I mean, you, at some point you might not even be able to get anybody on the phone during COVID. I, I completely understand, but uh, I do think we need to detach the two uh, and make sure we are taking a yeah. good well, hard look at the, the question that's being asked. Uh, yeah, I, th I think regardless, we have to 
because one is yeah. getting the authorization to spend the fund balance. Um, one, one more time about that 26000 you mentioned. What was that? That's, that was the final invoice. That was the final that invoice. That was the invoice that, that we had outstanding that came in about seven, eight months ago. Um, and that with working with county buildings, they requested we did not pay because they wanted to maintain the contractor's interest in the project to finish it. There were several items that needed to be finished um, and, and the feeling was that if we paid the final invoice, the contractor would lose interest in coming out and actually completing the project, which I think happens in a lot of projects, especially when you get to those last few details. I don't, I don't think that's unusual at all. Hmm. But so. we did not receive the, the final invoice until those last things were done, so we didn't have an, an actual dollars and cents. We had a, a rounded number. <clears throat> and, and obviously you're very comfortable with your fund balance going down to around 100 grand. No, not really, but it's, it's what we need to but do. you want to get it paid. The, a previous administration for the library made two promises with this project. And this is the fulfillment of the second one. The first was that we would get it open without asking for additional operating funds, which we've done. And the second is we would pay off the loan and, and we would raise the rest of the money on our own. And we've done that as well. So comfortable is a bad word, but you're willing to do it. To I'm, get this I'm willing to do it in order to, to make good on our promises as an organization, yes. So can I ask, I mean, did, and, and I guess this is a question for whoever, maybe Tim, if you have any thought about this or know about this, is there anything contractual with that loan which obligates the paying of the balance left with the interest at the same time? I'm sorry, I don't have the agreement. Jenny would oh, okay. It is. Um, there's a signed promissory note was that was to. dated on February 27th, 2019 that says about them accruing the interest and it has the stated percentage rate in there. But, but does it say that both the, the balance and that interest have to be paid at the same time? It's, um, sorry. Um, no, no, that's okay. I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything like that. I know you're trying to read some stuff. Um, it does say that it's due, yes. It is due, well, it shouldn't extend past 15 years for the whole draw and everything. So it doesn't say that it, the draw can go out, but yes, they do have to pay. Technically, the, the accrued interest was to begin on the date of the first draw and it says shall be paid semi-annually. So, so we, we could say, okay, pay off the, the balance of the 500000 and then over the next 15 years pay $2,000 a year as an interest payment. You could. I was actually, can I make a suggestion? Um, that they were saying that it should have taken eight months for the project. Could we, and I don't know, this is just a suggestion I'm making that we say that negotiate that they just pay eight interest equal to eight months on that yeah. 500,000 which would I just did a rough estimate would be around 10,600 instead of the full 30 mm -hmm. thousand it's just a suggestion because it took yeah. the money did go out yep. of our bank yep. account and I have to look at the interest that the county would be earning on that money if it was sitting in the investment accounts yeah no valid very valid very yes, appropriate thank you. suggestion um, were, was interest paid on the other million that has been paid to date? We never took all of the draws. We you only took did all the one draws. draw. We only took the one draw. Yeah, the loan okay. was for the amount of <clears throat> 1.5, and we took the first draw on yeah. March Got 19th it. of 2021. Okay. I just hate being so confused. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Ted. Okay, there's a, a piece you might be for, forgetting here. Um, <laughs> The uh, commissioners originally put $600,000 into this project and, and approved a, a loan, but in the last budget process you put in, I, I think it was a million dollars, might not have been exactly a million, but you put in another million dollars which made it unnecessary for the full loan to be used. So the commissioners right. put a we, we funded a million dollars. Yes. Right. Okay, yeah, that, that makes more sense to me. Um, 
Well, uh, well, I think I, I like Commissioner Guerin's suggestion of separating the two, and I think Commissioner Rossin, you may have alluded to this as well, separating the authorization for the payment of the five hundred thousand from the interest, which would give us the the ability to look at the interest itself and determine based on whether it would be a president, whether or not uh, this is something that we want to pursue. Um, it would give us the time to, to reflect on that. I have no problem with them paying off the, the five hundred thousand. Um, but you know, certainly the question of the, the the interest, and I think I like the idea of the fact that, and again, this is just me saying that without. Uh, I like the idea of of just that eight months, that ten thousand six hundred roughly, and that's another reason why I would suggest waiting, uh, you know, separating the two so that we could see actually, you know, how much interest has been accrued to the to the cent. Ten thousand nine seventy three fifteen. If we're talking about eight months. <laughs> Ten thousand nine seventy three fifteen. Along. Yeah, you I could also it. just say eight months of interest if that's easier. <laughs> oh. and, and I tend to oversimplify, so I'd rather see this settled. Um, my inclination would be that, which is more than fair, that they pay five hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, and that fully satisfies the loan. Okay. I don't. So think, I don't think for. Ten or fifteen thousand. We want to spend the next eight months talking about it, um, and nor do you. No, we do so, not. so I think we have. That, that's right. We we have two actions. Yes. And the first action, where, I mean, we can, and that is, um, a motion to uh, allow this um, use of the fund balance. Correct. Correct. Okay. So. I'll make a motion to authorize uh, the use of fund balance for the payment of five hundred thousand dollars on the loan. It, you don't. Have, I mean, do we even have to say a number or just no, the fine. use of the fund balance? Okay. Second. Okay. Got a motion. Got a second. Any discussion on using the fund balance? I'm I'm fine with they use the fund balance. I think we should do five fifteen and call it over with. Uh, can I ask why you would say 15 versus ten thousand nine hundred seventy three dollars and fifteen cents that would that ten thousand would be our portion they we would the eight months was ten grand and uh, prior to that was twenty grand correct 30, 30 grand 30. yeah so the total was 30 so I just said let's let's not do 40 percent let's just split it in half and call it done I, I, I follow the, the line of reasoning, but if the, the, if the amount of interest accrued in that time was 10973 why would we go for 50? Then we could say 20 grand. Um, I'm okay with that, too. In other words, we're for, of the 30 grand, we're forgiving the 10 for the eight months. That leaves 20. I was just reducing it. Yeah, so why wouldn't we go with basically, like you said, 20 grand or 19? If we're forgiving the eight months, okay. I'm, I was backwards. I'm sorry. Are we not? Oh, I, I got see you. You were thinking. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was. I, I, think with, I, th I think. You thought I, I was think overcharging. What, you know. Right. Yes. Mr. Gotcha. Gladdy was saying gotcha. was that we anticipated the project being eight months long, so we anticipated having the loan for eight months, so we would pay eight months of interest. That, I think that, that's right. Where that's he how was I was going. looking at it. As opposed to the forgiving eight months, we would just be responsible for the initial eight months that we anticipated this project being that's what we planned into the project Th that's the interest he was saying that we he felt the library should pay I, I don't mean to put words in your mouth no no that, that, that's 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 correct because I, I got what Kenny was saying backwards but yeah 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 I was saying cut him a break for five grand because if we keep talking about it, they're gonna owe twenty dollars more in interest <laughs> It's it's forty four dollars a day. And change, <laughs> repeating. At twelve oh one. Jenny, can you come back up here for a sec? Because now I'm. Is the. You believe, a way of solving this is to pay off, or is to, have the library pay the eight months of interest because of the expectations of the um, the work being done was eight months I think a fair effort would be that if they expected it to be eight months I mean we can't help the delays and everything that the economy took um, of course pandemic was in that mix this was signed prior to 
the pandemic starting, I think a fair look at this would mm -hmm. be if their expectation, they were fully expecting to pay within the eight months. <clears throat> and unfortunately, the pandemic happened and things happen. And I think a fair price would be to say, get back to what they originally expected. So, in my opinion. So instead so, of, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, yeah, whatever that figure needs to be, and we'll just have to amend the motion to that amount. So we're talking mm -hmm. 500 and $10,917. Can, can you just cap it to the eight, say, eight months worth of interest and be a little easier? That way you don't have to get into the exact figure. Sure. Is that, is that permissible? A, absolutely. Okay. So what you would do is, I think, amend. You disagree? <laughs> You're allowed. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, um, I, I believe you, you have to approve the amount that they're going to use from fund balance. Uh, okay. Do. So, that okay. The MOU so, does specifically state that. So, you know, if this is all going to be paid from fund balance, then it needs to be the, okay. the total, whatever we settle okay. on. Could just be eleven thousand dollars. I was going to say <laughs> it would be okay with eleven thousand dollars at this point if you wanted to. So I'll I'll amend my motion uh, to five hundred eleven thousand dollars from the fund balance. From the fund balance to approve use of fund balance for five hundred eleven thousand dollars. Okay. Is there a second? I apologize. No, that's a second. Thank you. And and I'm fine with that, but then we're eating they're paying eight months we're eating whatever 23 minus eight is but that's fine i don't i'm happy okay the math's wrong but you're eating they, 15 months they, they have a very nice place and lewis was a very good contractor so we should bend their way thank you i, I appreciate that okay any other discussion appreciate all the discussion we had from both Ted, Jenny, and the two of you as well. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's no, very uh, appreciated. No, no, thank you very, thank <laughs> thank you you very much. Thank you very much. The, the importance about this is, I mean, whether it's a dollar, $11,000 or X, we are taking this very serious because it's not our money. Absolutely. And, uh, I appreciate that conversation. Absolutely. Um, Okay, let's talk about transitional housing facilities capital loan. Okay. Ms. Steckel. All right, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'm, I'm joined this morning with De by Debbie Standiford, our grants manager. Um, I also have Scott Yard is with us in, in the audience. Um, as we're talking about the family shelter relocation, I wanted to have him here. Um, uh, we're here before you today for the approval um, uh, just to to advise you that we have been approved um, of the from the Maryland Shelter and Transitional Housing Facilities Capital Loan um, Grant Program, um, and we wanted to come back before you today. We came before the board in December of 2022 um, for approval to submit this application for funding to help us support the relocation um, and the renovation of the current family shelter. Um, the funding that we were seeking would help us to do this renovation and relocation um, because our current family shelter that's been in operation for over 30 years is really not um, the safest, uh, best location that we could, we could host our most vulnerable clients um, in Carroll County in, which is our children and families. Um, so over the years, um, the shelter, over the past four years, the shelter has served 306 adults and 243 children the shelter typically does operate at capacity and with a waiting list. The current shelter doesn't provide the adequate space and there are significant concerns about the safety and accessibility and the lack of child um, f uh, friendly spaces. So if you've been there um, and we would welcome any of you who have not been there, um, Scott would be happy to provide a tour of the shelter space. Um, there is no grass area um, in the location where they, they are currently housed. Um, in 2021, though, the county did purchase the building on Stoner Avenue in Westminster in order to relocate this family shelter. So this has been a work in progress. Um, <clears throat> and in response to the application for this funding for the, the um, 
the Maryland Shelter and Transitional Housing Facilities Capital Grant Program, we have gotten a letter of award for Carroll County for $1.5 million to help support that renovation and relocation. But instead of the uh, awarding a grant like the Department of Housing and Community Development has done in the past, they've kind of changed their program and they're calling this a repayable loan. And what that means is if we continue to operate the shelter uh, for 15 years in, in the full capacity of a shelter as we have suggested, which we intend to do, th there would be no repayment required. Uh, so we just wanted to come before you today so that you had an understanding that, that the way that they've awarded this um, has changed. And then, Ted, I don't know if you want to speak. I see you standing back there. Or if Debbie wants to go into the budget uh, for the project. Go ahead. Wow, Ted. that's pretty impressive. <laughs> She has eyes behind. She's a This is awesome. Behind. I got my camera. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah. my rear view. <laughs> I just wanted to add one note for the commissioners on this idea of a repayable loan in, instead of a grant. On the surface, you might say it doesn't make any difference. And in the end, we don't get to choose, so it, does, it doesn't make any difference. But because it's going to be a loan, uh, for accounting reasons, we have to reserve the amount of this loan. So there's, there's money that would potentially have been available for use that is going to be sitting on the sideline while we're waiting for this to get done. And this is, I think, the second time we've had this come up recently. I'm hoping that this is not a, a trend and what we're going to see because it, 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 would, it would mean tying up um, mm -hmm. with, a, with a big loan, you know, a lot of money. Did, we did this, was it last, a couple weeks ago? A couple ago. weeks ago with uh, Land and Resource Management. Right. They had the same thing. Oh, they went for a by, grant. by the uh, fire. Wasn't it Wells or something? Um, for a stormwater management pond, I think. Stormwater management. It was by um, the uh, training center. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yeah. And it was a loan thanks, because that, that does also yeah. tie up that money. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. I mean, is it easier for the state to do it this way or for others? I mean, it's unclear. And I spoke to the program officer about the change, um, didn't shed a lot of light on it. But I mean, we have the same obligation, we use the same grant program to build the safe haven shelter right. on, on Stoner Avenue. And there was an obligation to operate for 15 years. Uh -huh. They placed a lien on the property at that time. So I'm thinking this mechanism is safer for the state they then ensure that nothing else will happen to the property and we will use it um, under the terms and conditions that we've agreed to we have to report to the state every year that we're still using it and who's been served um, but it is the same funding and we would have an obligation to operate it um, anyway it doesn't change that obligation just the mechanism changes and how we have to recognize that loan um, at the county level okay so so if we did this would this fall under the current fiscal year or next fiscal year this is currently their letter of intent to award we have not accepted the funding yet and we don't we are not going they asked us to put the application in um, now so we're in the queue they have the, they have a limited amount of funding each year with the understanding that we might push it out I don't think that this will go I, I'm thinking we won't be in construction until early 2025 um, we need to get design done and we need to get right. the other funding sources in place so I think this will push into 2025 and that won't affect the vi viability of the loan or anything or no they understand that this letter of intent is good for one year so if we're not ready to draw the money and and settle after that one year point we'll need to talk to them about pushing it into the next fiscal year and from they're our, aware and, of that i'm sorry so i'm sorry you know and, and from our perspective you know what ted said is if we do this then we're going to have to allocate 1.5 million from somewhere to do this correct it's a, that's an accounting function here. Right. So um, you remember the, the idea of fund balance. That at the end of the year, we have more revenue than we budgeted or fewer expenditures than we budgeted. There's some money left over. If the commissioners don't act in a budget to do something with that, that remains in an accounting place. We call it unassigned fund balance. Uh, doing this means we would have to take 1.5 million dollars out of unassigned fund balance actually identify it as saved reserved against this loan when that when that's done then it would become available for unassigned fund balance again so you don't lose anything uh but it takes away your ability to use the money 
So, so we're not earning interest on that money. Well, you would be. While, it, while it's sitting, while it's reserved on this loan, we would have it invested. And we th- could still have it invested. Yes. In other words, we're not losing the fact that we could earn interest on it because that, w- that would be a half million dollars or so. But we're not losing that. Right. You're, you're not losing your ability for interest. You're not losing your ability to eventually use the money. It's just for a while it's tied up. Right. So. And no interest accrues on this either. So even if we had to pay it back, let's say, you know, after 14 years, there would be no interest accrued and okay. we're not paying interest as it goes. And the other question we had for the state is, is it, is it reduced by each year that we operate, which was how grants typically work? She would, is going to get back to us on that. But when we sign the final agreement, that's one thing we'll look for. So can we reduce what we've reserved mm-hmm. by a million or 100,000, I can't do math on the spot, I should know that by now as many times Every as year. I have tried yeah. to do that, $100,000 a year. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, good, good questions and appreciate all the follow-up staffing. Okay. Any other uh, questions? If not, is there a motion? Motion uh, to accept the FY24 Maryland Shelter and Transitional Housing Facilities Capital Loan. Second. I got a motion, I got a second, any discussion? Seen here, none all in favor? Aye. 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 Good job, ladies. All right, thank, thank you. you. Commissioners. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, Mr. Zaleski. And Ms. Evahan, budget update for second quarter FY23. Morning. <clears throat> Morning. So this is just to give you a sense, while we're talking about unassigned fund balance, this is kind of heading toward what do we see at the end of fiscal year 23. Now, of course, it's very early. There's still a lot that can happen. So we're not saying these are the numbers, just with what we know today, here's what we think it would look like. Um, Start with a really big picture, and then I'll fill in how we got there. we believe we will end fiscal year 23 with about $27 million that would be, uh, could go to unassigned fund balance. Uh, I want to say at this point, this is going to be the third consecutive year of unusually large surpluses. I still very firmly believe that this is not an indication that this is our new norm. I think we're still finding our way through some uh, unusual years. Uh, I know there will undoubtedly be people who are going to look at what's been going on and say, you've got lots of money, you can do X or Y or or Z, and I'm not there. Um, Now, of that $27 million, we have a longstanding arrangement where we look at 1% of what was left over as a revenue to a future fiscal year. That'd be about four and a half million dollars. So we'd be left with about 22 and a half million. Now this number can still change and there are some things that are still unsettled right now that could lead to this be even noticeably larger than what we're saying right now. Uh, there's some downside, but I think there's more upside right now than there is downside. So how did we get there? You know, revenue side, we're figuring property tax is going to come in about a million dollars more than we budgeted. A uh, million dollars is a lot of money, but a million dollars on our property tax revenue is not a very significant difference. Income tax, this is the big question mark. Right now, we're saying $13.5 million over budget. Uh, Our first distribution back in November came in well over expectations. And there was just a meeting yesterday. Unfortunately, I was not able to be there, but the budget analyst Taylor Hawkinsmith was. uh, We talked with people across the state with the state comptroller about income tax and Basically, what we're hearing from the state comptroller is not in these words, but you've got us. We don't understand what's going on either. Um, So it's hard to know what that means for the rest of this 
fiscal year or for the future. But with $13.5 million, you know, we're saying if the rest of the year comes in as we expected it, here's where we're going to end up. But it's certainly possible right now that we're going to see more than we expected, which means that this number would continue to grow. Uh, recordation, we think, will come in about $1.2 million more than we budgeted. This is a, this is a changing situation. You know, we've, uh, recordation you know, is 1% is on uh, sales of property. Uh, when COVID hit, we thought house sales would more or less stop. That didn't happen. In fact, we've had a booming time, which has meant recordation has gone up to not the highest we've ever seen, but getting in the vicinity of highest we've ever seen. But we know that that can't continue at that rate. Homes are not going to continue to sell as they have been in the last two years. And we're already starting to see that change. The questions are just how quickly do things change and, and, and how much. So we are expecting uh, a slowdown the rest of the year. If, if we get the timing wrong, the 1.2 might be 1.4, or maybe it's only a million if things slow down even more quickly than we expected. Uh, rest of revenues all totaled up don't really have a significant impact on our expectations. On the sp expenditure side, uh, in any year, we expect to not spend everything that we said we could spend. You know, again, the question is, how, how big is that? So um, we are looking at about $10 million, we think, to be, be underspent. A uh, million and a half of that is positions in public works. A big part of that is positions in roads, open positions. We're not spending the money. Uh, sheriff, about 600,000 open positions. State's attorney, about 300,000 open positions. It, this, is all at, this is all of the 10 million? Yes. Okay, okay, thanks. Uh, fire and EMS, about 1.2. This is all about timing. We've budgeted for things to happen that have not happened yet. Um, there's, we did not build this in, but there's still about $2 million left in snow removal, which might actually add to our expectations. But right now, as, as calm a winter as it's been, it's still too early to assume that nothing is going to happen in February or March. What was that figure again, Ted? I'm sorry. I about $2 million that, that budgeted but hasn't been spent. What do you think? Uh, General, your employees, uh, about 900,000 for open positions. The reserve for contingencies, we have uh, $6.1 million remaining. Now, um, the last board, when we adopted this year's budget, uh, we increased the size of the reserve for contingency, probably not by 50%, but head, heading that way. The reason we did that was because of uncertainty about inflation and rising costs, and we wanted to leave some room if uh, we needed to deal with something. Uh, One more time, how much is that? $6.1 million at this point. Thanks. So we've spent about a $1 million out of the reserve for contingencies. The Almost all of that would be two, two decisions you made uh, on space for the, the sheriff. Um, about a, a million dollars. This would have been the additional space at North Carroll High School and then the recent leasing of space that you, you approved. Um, then lots of other things moving in different directions, but they don't add up to en enough to uh, make their way into this conversation. So, you know, we are still in February. You know, we have a good bit of the year left to go. I don't know how to tell you the things we don't, we don't know about, but um, you know, we could have things that work uh, either for us or, or against us as we try and determine exactly where this number will land. Um, I think that's, that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, if there are questions, we can try and tackle those for you. Are, are we seeing or still seeing any money from 
whatever the federal estate for COVID money, or has that been exhausted and and we're not getting any more? Well, there's that's a complicated question because there wasn't just one money, and Roberta oh, is probably actually in a better position to answer that than I am. So we have received all the money we're going to receive, as far as we know, okay. um, and and not only uh, directly to the county, but also directly to and I say uh, um, sort of to be used in some generic ways, but also specific programs have also received all the money we believe they're going to receive. Um, and um, in fact, we're gonna do an update um, for the board on where all that stands in the next couple of weeks, I think the beginning of March. Um, so yeah, that money's already been received and uh, already allocated for the most part, not necessarily spent yet. But none of it's a factor in this. No. no. And Ted, would it be possible to get a copy of the, the numbers that you just shared with us? Sure. Thank you. It sounds like you have guarded optimism. <laughs> Always. I'm sorry. I'm not used to seeing that. <laughs> I've waited for the guarded I, optimist I, a long time. Yeah, there, so. I, I got a smile. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the, the most optimistic I've ever seen this gentleman Th this is it. was at Best Western and none of the commissioners made it and yeah. he was very optimistic that day but unfortunately you guys didn't see it Speaking yeah. of that, <laughs> it's not it's not will be doing his chamber talk next thursday the 16th the same Correct. one oh, really is it next thursday already <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is in the afternoon so i, I will not be there it again. but uh yeah, just you know, don't 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 use the tennis ball analogy anymore okay <laughs> we we got that one it was but, just uh, that one year um it's really not about optimism or or pessimism yeah i'm just trying to share what it is i think we can expect with the information that we have so right now you know what people might take as optimism is me saying yes there's more money right now than we would typically expect to, to have um yeah. so it just it's where we are i mean it doesn't it doesn't you know give us that more flexibility and i mean you know uh again everybody has a priority you know that's out there that's listening and it's important that we hear those priorities but understand there is a lot of work to do to uh provide safety security the great education the quality of life we have in our community in our county um, I, th I think it's good you said that that way because i probably should say this you know this does give you flexibility for one-time kinds of things. Right. It doesn't give you flexibility right. for adding positions, expanding services, et, et cetera. And um, we'll come back to this again. I'm just gonna mention it today so it's on, on your mind. Uh, one thing I'm gonna be suggesting that you do is from this unusually large unassigned fund balance, and it's not just this year, but what we've accumulated for the, for the last several years is to look at establishing by policy uh, a, a 5% unassigned fund balance that we intend to keep there. It's not sitting there to just use in any given budget, budget the way we typically would, but to be sitting there for the times when we have to deal with something unexpected. And my, my perfect example is COVID. You know, if not for the federal stimulus, we would have been faced with the need to reduce services in the middle of the year. I don't know how we would have avoided doing that. And that's, that's a very hard thing to do. You know, you've, right. you've told people, here's what you've got to do the things you do, and now you're saying, oh, but sorry, we need to take some of the back. And made harder for some organizations because there are some places you can't take the money back. Like once you send it to the school system, you can't say, oh, we want $5 million back. So it's even that much more on on others but if we had had a five percent unassigned fund balance sitting there and we did have to deal with it that would have given you a lot of room to think through how you wanted to address it rather than ha being forced into making decisions maybe that really weren't what you wanted right and then um as taught and led by you and others masking operational dollars with un unassigned fund balance is not good practice Yes. And um, we're going to get into that very, you know, deliberately, but, um, you know, being, and that's part of that transparency, being very open about how our out years look, because they're pretty ugly right now, but uh, they could have been masked 
and um, you know we don't want to do that. Um, so th this is this is good. This to me is really good, uh, and it's pretty exciting because uh, looking at you know potential for unsigned fund balance, but to think that it could be masked into operational dollars is just not a good way to go. So. Yeah, and on on the operating plan. Um, We've been focused here on one-time change, but we are going to be bringing you back a better-looking picture to start this budget process than we were, where we were in the last budget process. Uh, it doesn't make all of our problems go away, but right. it, it's going to be a, a little easier to look at this year. We're not, not prepared yet to get into the details of all that, but uh, we are confident that we're going to be able to give you a better starting point. Okay. And I think you can't overemphasize that most of this is one-time money. Now, right. some of the positions may or may not be, but in theory, you want to fill those positions someday. So that it's not really ongoing unless you eliminate them. Yes, exactly right. It's only on, it's only one time unless you eliminate. Them. Yes. Okay. Um, any other discussion? comments appreciate it. yeah i think uh, get, getting uh, much. getting this um email to us also helps so really appreciate it okay. thank you very much thank you ted maybe you're the uh, strong silent type <laughs> let's get a little planning going give us as much great news as mr zaleski just gave us i think it's great news right i think it is too because that uh product that you presented and you're going to present to us again. you guys were only here to listen to the budget part. Well, that too, and that was exciting. <laughs> okay, so, Mr. Eisenberg, who do you have with you? Yeah, so good morning, commissioners. I have with me today Abigail Rogers and Tiffany Fawcett. They are the two planners and our staff that put together the zoning definition and explainer documents that you have. Um, this was uh, addressed with the last Board of County Commissioners as we were working our way through the comprehensive code update to come up with um, a more visual display of our zoning code and um, a more easier to use explanation of what our zoning code is. We understand that codes are complex. They are the rule of law. So these regulations should not be very simple, but they shouldn't be so um, so much so that you, you can't read through and kind of get the basic premise of what they are about. So part of what we did um, for the code update was modernization of the code, getting rid of uses that don't exist anymore, cleaning up some areas of the code, putting in a table of uses for each district, which was huge, because you'd have to read down a list of what was allowed um, in the district, what was allowed by a conditional use approval, and sometimes it wasn't really clear in reading the text. So we thought the table of uses was a really nice way to have an at-a-glance to um, for the county code. Now, these two documents, the definitions and the explainer, do not replace the county code or the county zoning administrator's interpretation of the code. That is first and foremost. This is just a way to help the layperson um, understand what it is that they're reading. And if they have additional questions, comments, concerns, to contact planners in our office, to contact the zoning administrator and get the clarification that's necessary. Um, this is also posted on our website, and we do have printed copies available for those that wish to have that. So, printed last... Printed copies, I apologize. Yeah. Printed copies for <clears throat> who? Pardon me? Printed copies for who? Whoever though? would like them. Okay, are we going to um, provide them potentially at the libraries or senior centers or... For folks we can that certainly do that. We take a look. We're getting away from a lot of the printed documents unless they're requested, um, but we can certainly make some accommodations and print um, okay. some materials out for this. Absolutely, and whoever requests them too, we we're happy to 
print these documents and bind them and um, get them in the hands of those who are interested. Um, you That's all- a good idea, Commissioner Rothstein. I, I apologize for yeah, interrupting, sure. but I've, I've had a number of people who've reached out to me about obtaining printed copies of certain things. And then, of course, I'm pretty old-fashioned myself, so I prefer printed copies where I can get them. That's all right. I still paper paper too. Sometimes it's just easier. Go. It's there foolproof. I mean, it always works whenever you need it. <laughs> right. Right. No, totally understand that. Um, but you know, as I said, a lot of it's also online too. But we'll print out whatever um, needs to be printed out um, from whomever might need Absolutely. that information. Um, so with that, I'm going to have um, these ladies present um, the information that they have in front of you today and also you did receive copies ahead of today's briefing um, and actually the reason we're presenting especially today is because you've been hearing a lot of zoning cases we had one last week that we were able to pull this from um, our our staff and bring this up to you to help make your decision I mean you're having another zoning hearing next week as well so this will be a good tool for you to understand what the zoning is what the allowable uses are and aren't and what some of the other other things we think of uses but there's also other parts of the code like bulk requirements which we'll go over setbacks um, other design criteria that are all part of our code so with that I'm going to turn it over to Abigail and Tiffany okay hi so um, this came around because of the zoning code update it's part of the master plan implementation to update chapter 158 of the zoning regulations and this is for consistency reasons. So this is an illustrated guide to the definitions in zoning. It's intended to accompany, like Linda said, not replace the codified definitions. It's an informal guide, and it's developed so like any citizen can kind of figure out what these terms mean. And um, the terms are alphabetical, too. We found that was the most simple way mm -hmm. to organize them. So uh, we've been talking about this since about 2019. And the goal was to just inform residents, um, anyone who's not a planner, basically. And uh, the code revisions were completed, so now is the perfect time for that. And um, the terms pertain to stuff like lots, bulk requirements, transportation, different kinds of residences, like apartments, houses, uh, detached accessory dwelling units, um, and also technical terms. And sort of a, just a diagram, if you look at any page of this packet um, of how this works, is you'll have the code definition, which is what's the legalese, what is in the code. Mm -hmm. And it's also referenced so you can find it in the code. And then the layperson's explanation, which is sort of the plain English, how, do you, how you'd explain it to a friend. And um, some of these graphics are photos, just as examples, and some of them are um, diagrams, some that I made, some that I found in other sources. And this is just an example you have for frontage, the code def definition, the front of the lot, so on, um, and then a diagram that shows in yellow where that is, and then sort of the explanation of what frontage means and what the grade plane means. And this was really important with frontage, especially on um, properties mm -hmm. and in the code where we have multiple frontages <laughs> um, referenced. So we do have that also um, in a diagram as well, um, kind of showing you, okay, fr front side, front rear, front, just depending on what, what it faces. And so, so it seems pretty straightforward to me. I would, um, in case anyone has questions about any specifically of one of the terms, uh, I can answer that for you. So the zoning definition explainer are really the terms that you'll find in the code, and that's what this document is. So we're not going to go through each one of those, but please review. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, we're happy to come um, and meet with you on um, what these are. But I think it's pretty self-explanatory, um, this 15-page uh, document. I have a question, and it doesn't have to be for today, but I think as we hear more zoning issues, we're going to start hearing of non-conforming uses and conditional uses mm -hmm. and, and I'd love to hear some good explanation on that and like I said it doesn't have to be today but mm -hmm. but moving forward I just think it's gonna I think at our next public hearing we're gonna hear that I think okay all right well I think we'll get to some of that um, with the portion that Tiffany has prepared, which is a citizen's guide to Carroll County zoning districts. So what um, Abigail prepared was more 
what terms you'll find. This is now kind of a reinterpretation, so to speak, of the code itself. So go ahead, Tiffany. And, and that's yep. the document you brought to last week. Correct. Meeting. Yes. Yes. And she did a wonderful graphical job as well as Abigail kind of colorizing it, keeping consistent with the theme, um, moving forward with all of the districts and definitions of things. So thank you. Does anyone need a copy? We do, I do have extras today as well. Yeah. Okay. okay, great. Um, staff has, as Linda had already pointed out, staff has created a citizen's guide to Carroll County zoning districts as a companion to the zoning definitions that Abigail just presented to help with a layperson's interpretation. Whereas the um, zoning definitions were part of the implementation of the comp plan since 2019, the guide itself really came out of the discussion uh, during the process of that. Um, so in its, just to make the, um, the zoning and planning more approachable to the citizen of Carroll County, hopefully. In its entirety, the guide is intended as a, sorry, I'm looking over the, <laughs> yeah, over the you no, you're fine, you're <laughs> fine. As it, just please understand that I am doing <laughs> In its entirety, the guide is intended as an overview that follows the zoning process in Carroll County. That begins with the five general land use categories and then that lays the basis for the designated land uses that are found in and envisioned in the Carroll County Master Plan, the Freedom Community Comprehensive Plan, and the Finksburg Corridor Plan, and that lays the basis for the future zoning districts. Thank you. The guide begins with a table of contents and a brief description of um, introduction, and the next page it shows the five general land use categories for Carroll County and gives a description of each. The next page is a table that shows the zoning districts, their relation to those categories, the general land use categories. And then on the right hand side, just a very brief description of what each of those zoning districts is. But that is all of the zoning districts. Thank you. And then after that, the guide is sectioned and sorted by, by general land use categories. Those categories are agricultural, conservation, residential, commercial, and industrial. And on the cover sheet of each of those sections, you'll see the future land uses and the zoning districts that are associated with those categories. And then each section begins with the future land uses associated with that category. On the left-hand side of that page, you'll see the future land uses as defined or described in the plans. And on the right-hand side, you'll see those future land uses as designated in the plans. On the next page, you see, oh, go back, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> on the next page is the zoning districts associated with that general land use category. So in this case, it's residential, so you see um, all of those zoning districts listed on the left-hand side of that. And on the right-hand side, you see the map of those zoning districts in the county. Next, each zoning district is explained so it can be used as a standalone book, uh, look at the district. So in this case, again, using residential as an example, those zoning districts would be as standalones, the R40,000, R20,000, R10,000, and R7,000 residence districts that would fall under that section. Please, thank you. Finally, following the zoning text from the code and the colors from the zoning map, each district is broken into four at-a-glance snapshots for quick reference. Those snapshots are the purpose, the permitted uses, the conditional uses, and the bulk requirements. Although I'm going to be using R20,000 as an example, that, um, that template can be used for, it's applied to all of the zoning districts in the guide. Thank you. The first one in the zoning districts will be the purpose of the zoning district. On the left-hand side, it shows the zoning district um, purpose as taken from the code. And on the right-hand side, shows a map of the zoning districts in the county. The next one will be the permitted uses of the districts. On the left, at the top of the left-hand side, you see um, the explanation of what a permitted use is. Under that, you'll see a table that shows what the principal use is, what a an accessory use is and what a non-conforming use is. And on the right-hand side, you see the typical permitted uses by principal use and accessory use. 
And under that, you see that there is um, a reference to the code where you can find that information in the code. And on the bottom of every page, you'll see that there is a disclaimer that says that this guide is for reference only and to please contact the, the Office of the Zoning Administrator for further clarification on the ordinances. Right, so this does not replace the code. We want to make that very clear. Thank you. The next page shows the conditional uses. On the left-hand side, it ex it explains that a conditional use may be allowed if approved by the Carroll County's Board of Zoning Appeals, BZA, and under that it shows what the BZA does. And on the right-hand side, it shows the conditional uses that, are requ that require BZA approval and listed in alphabetical order. Under that, again, reference to where you can find that in the code and the disclaimer on the bottom left as well. And then finally, in each district, you'll see the bulk requirements with the asterisk showing wherever it's in different places on different, um, different bulk requirement pages, but it will explain what bulk requirements are because it's not very, a very familiar term for people, um, that it does determine the size and placement of a building on a lot. Then there's an illustrated um, version of the showing the bulk requirements as well as a table showing the bulk requirements for the typical lot requirements for dwelling in the agricultural the conservation and the residential um, categories. However, the commercial and then the industrial show a building on the lot as opposed to the dwelling. On the left-hand side, then, there is the bulk requirements for the other permitted uses in that district with no renderings for that. Up in the right-hand corner, if there is something that we felt was of note for that district, we just note it there. For instance, when you go into um, an R20,000 district, it is not always a minimum lot size of 20,000 square feet because it could be clustered, allowing for more open space but not increasing the density. And so um, that might be a smaller lot size. And as Linda had said, all of this is available on our website um, under planning resources. Um, do you have any questions? Any questions I'll, uh, I'll share with you? Uh, these are awesome. You know, after um, living through this for the last few years, going through the definitions, the deliberate approach, um, you know, participating on planning and zoning. Um, I mean, it's definitely a team effort. Um, it's not one or the other, but it's all. And uh, being able to package it, color code it, make it easy to read um, for the community, for us. You know, so when somebody calls me about mm -hmm. X, I can say, hold on, and I can pull this out as a guide. I mean, it's... All, yeah, it's awesome. A um, lot of hard work, and I can't I, thank them enough for all the hard work and hours they put in um, to thinking up how, how do you make this visual and illustrative of what a lot of boring text is, and they really did do a great job at that. So what are you doing to, uh, to award them or reward them? <laughs> Just this is it. being here right <laughs> in front of you today. Freezer Friday. Yes. <laughs> so I got, I got okay. one. Oh, I'll get another one. <laughs> uh -oh. So I have to go get one. Oh, a challenge coin. Uh, wow. One oh, my gosh. All right. Thank you. Yeah, congrats, yeah, the, ladies. The work is phenomenal. Um, I, I tell you, I, we, we've lived through this over years. And obviously for me in the Freedom District, you know, I get questions and challenged in all the time. And it's like I can't come up with a clear answer in so many ways, but this allows me to do that. And it's not to be confrontational, it's to be clear, it's to be definitive, and that's what this is about. Um, so yeah, just a great job with both of these products. Thank you. And I do owe you a coin, which you will get. Yeah, we're very proud, and thank you so much Absolutely. for recognizing that. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Wonderful. One more, condition, uh, one more question on conditional uses. In, in the agricultural district, are the conditional uses, do they apply to all ag land? Do they reply to remainders? Or are there different mm -hmm. conditional uses? So the zoning of conditional uses applies to all to properties, all. Okay. regardless of ag remainder or not. Though there are some s certain stipulations with remaining portions that were changed with the recodification of the yes. ag zone and limits 
of how many you can have on those remaining portions. But yep. in general, this list applies to Correct. All. We, we don't discern between ag-remainders, non-ag-remainders. Mm -hmm. um, and then easements are, are treated the same, but what happens under the easement or the terms of the easement agreement will then set additional limitations of what can and can't be done on that property. Okay. Yeah, just, to, just to clarify something, I might have been misunderstood about, can you or can you not put a church on ag, ag land. Is you that can. Permiss okay, so that would fall under public facility when I'm looking at the principal uses? Um, how do I don't we, see church. I think we have it as institution as a conditional use. Religious establishment under conditional use. Oh, there it was. Just, just, I was looking for the wrong word. Okay, thank you. No, that's a good note for me to... Yeah, that's. I could add church in there too. Well, you never know nowadays. You're probably just and, better off going with religious. And and I think one of the issues that has come up lately is what is a church? Again, yeah. My humble opinion in ag areas, a church was something that 40 or 50 people went to on Sunday, not a mega church that has 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. But I guess by your definition, a church is a church. But also, we, we had that conversation when we were going through the definitions because we, we had a round table out there. Oh, and, okay. Um, for, it went from, I think, permissible to conditional. Um, Correct. To m ensure people are going through the next step. Okay. So it's not, you know, one fit fits all or one size fits all. Um, so in and theory, the next step will clarify some of correct. that. Correct, and it goes there, through the BZA, theory. and it gets the community more engaged and, and folks defining it. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of conditional use. I like black and white, but for agricultural district, um, uh, we found that conditional use was valuable uh, to take it to the next step um, and not just, you know, say, yep, you're approved just because it's permissible. So. And I th uh, from what I remember, religious facilities was part of that conversation. Okay. So, yeah, that, yeah. That, it's come up uh, in, in my district. Uh, yep. and, and I'll just say, the, these are fantastic. I, I wish I had had these when I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission <laughs> yeah. a long time ago no because, boy, oh, boy, that could get confusing. Uh, my last question is, uh, and this probably isn't fair to you, but are we going to be able to put these online? They are online. They're already online. Yep. Okay, <laughs> just want to make sure. Yep. Yep, and that's the websites that are referenced here okay. in the presentation. Okay. Just things can be. All right. Yeah, I, I'll follow up with whatever the uh, other commissioners have said this morning. These are beautifully done. I do writing, editing, and graphic design for a living, and these these really are beautifully done. And I'm wondering if, and it doesn't have to be today, can I get extra copies of each of these? Because I'd like to keep some of them at home and some of them here at the office. I mean, it, absolutely. Could want us yeah. to sign them for you too? I, can, <laughs> I, I have. Yes, I know people. I don't have challenge coins for you, okay. but I'll certainly. <laughs> <Okay. them. laughs> We'll give you an autograph copy. <laughs> uh, there, they are. You, yeah. Like uh, Commissioner Karen was on the plan and zoning years ago, and uh, oh my gosh, I, I couldn't imagine having this years ago, let alone just two years ago. Oh yeah, um, it's, it was. Uh, it, it could be a, quite a lift. So much easier. So right. And and as others will tell you, when I keep asking my questions, you can tactfully say, "Did you read it before you ask me those?" <laughs> or you know, but or at least look at the picture. <laughs> <laughs> now, fantastic. Um, I fell into that trap a minute ago. <laughs> so, Mr. Burke, do you have any comments on this? Oh, no, thank you. You sure? Yeah. Like, okay. Very well done. Ms. Wyndham. No, I think they're great. I think, and also just to um, Commissioner Garen's point, the code itself is so much easier to mm -hmm. read now, with just the table uses yeah. than it was before. So that alone was a big step forward, and then this is just the icing on the yeah. cake. So yep. very well done. Absolutely. And I still get complaints from the old guys. Why right. did you mess with that code? <laughs> yeah, but you got to tell Commissioner Weaver to go away. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, is there any? Requirement here or is this no, just, no, just informational? Okay, thank you so much, You're ladies. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank Mary. You. You're the strong, silent type behind them. Yeah, now I gotta follow them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now let's talk about the uh, transportation. Yes. The transportation program. This is last year's letter. Yes. Okay. Morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning again. So today is an introduction um, to familiarize you all with is, the is Consolidated Transportation Program 
um, the county priority letter and how this works with the county's transportation priorities that we forward for, for state roads to the Maryland Department of Transportation. Um, again, this, this is state roads, so we're not talking about some of our local county roads in this process. We are talking about roads that are under state control. The state doesn't necessarily know what our priorities are for each of our major roads um, unless we tell them. And some of those roads are completely within Carroll County. Some of them are in multiple jurisdictions. And as our role in the Baltimore Metropolitan Council's Regional Transportation Board, BRTB, and you'll hear some of that later when I come to you with our um, agency briefing, um, this really is the culmination of what we'll be forwarding um, under your direction to the state for your priorities for the county for state roads now i'm going to go back just a little bit that um the this is what the state looks at and, and takes forward um through a very uh interesting cycle which mary will um review with you and what this letter means and what it what it doesn't mean um because it is kind of a complex process it's not as straightforward as one might think um, so bear with us as we go through this kind of tediousness of, of what this letter is and what it means and how we move forward with it so with that i'm going to turn it over to mary lane who is our planning manager um she's been here with us before i believe in front of this commission but i'm not sure oh but if not this is mary our planning manager Thank you. Um, we come here every year about this time, but I'm going to be a little more thorough with new members. So um, bear with me if some of it seems pretty basic. So today we'll be going over what is the CTP, the Consolidated Transportation Program, going to review the process, do the highlights of last year's letter, which you just received. Typically we work from last year's letter. We never, it's been years and years since we created a new letter. So that's, again, a new board. You can do what you want, but that has typically been what we've done and we're typically consistent in our priorities with little tweaks here and there. Um, also the timing and next steps and then any questions that you have. And that's really important that we have similar letters from year after year. Um, that has really gained us a lot of traction in the last seven or eight years having that consistency in what Carroll County is putting forward as its priorities. Unfortunately, road projects, especially at the state and federal level, literally move at an iceberg pace. I think a snail is definitely faster. So, you know, we are talking decades in the making for these roadways, um, especially if it's a new roadway being constructed by the state, um, and additional capacity enhancing also again these move very slowly through the process because they're big big budget items okay so first what is the CTP and very simply it is Maryland's six-year capital budget for transportation projects it contains programs and projects across all MDOT departments similar to your CIP but at the state mm -hmm. level um, each year a county has, should submit their letter for transportation priorities to MDOT to the secretary of MDOT by April 1st the list of state transportation priorities includes state highways and roads, streetscape projects, those are for the towns, um, county trails, as well as transit priorities. So timing and coordination, this is where we are right now, January and February. Um, our department works with county agencies as well as the towns to update the letter. We work with public works, economic development, and recreation and parks, and all eight municipalities. Um, Basically, we remove completed projects, new issues can be raised, um, but typically, as I said, few changes are usually made from the previous letter. Then in March, we'll be back before you either once or twice, depending on how many times you want to review it, um, for your approval of the letter. And then by April 1st, the county submits the letter to the state with delegation signatures. And this is also important to try to get the delegation on board with what your priorities are. We work with Mike to get those, and we we've been successful in getting them mm -hmm. in on time and some jurisdictions do it differently some jurisdictions just have the county executive sign off on it some have the complete um, uh, county council or county board of commissioners depending um, and then others like ourselves also work with the delegation to get their mm -hmm. support because they're the ones who can lobby to move these projects ahead during um, the budgetary cycle for the state and if you ever do want to see other um, counties letters they're all on the MDOT, MDOT website from the previous year 
Um, so then in September, once the secretary gets your letter, they work throughout until September and October preparing the draft CTP, and then they participate in what's called the county tour meetings, which has been confusing in the past, which is why I put this uh, picture here. <laughs> it's not a tour. Nobody gets in a bus or anything. They're touring around the um, state. And this is, I guess it was 2019, the commissioners as well as that time I think it was Greg Slater yes. right. and his department heads and then you can't see but in the audience are many of the town elected officials. Mm -hmm. So um, we have two things pre-tour which is more the staff level where we talk with our MDOT counterparts and then tours more the elected officials um, come to that as well as as Mary said each modality from state uh, Maryland Department of Transportation so you have state highway administration federal aviation ports so even though things aren't directly in Carroll um, they still talk about all modalities across the board and then um, January of the following year after that fall the secretary of MDOT presents the CTP to the legislature and then in April the legislature approves it for the upcoming fiscal year so um, if you can go to the next slide basically for us it's a 14 month process where we are now with the January February presentation that is for our FY 24 letter but if you go around the circle to um, in between January and April, that is them working on the FY23 approval. So, and it's an on, did I say that correctly? FY24. FY yeah, FY24, so we're gonna be working on FY24. FY24, you're preparing. Right, oh. we're preparing FY24. Right. We're preparing FY24, but the legislature's considering the FY23. FY23, yes. Yeah. yes. And so okay. basically for us, it's a 14 month yeah. continuous process. Um, I'll jump right into last year's letter unless you had any questions about the process. Okay. Um, last year's letter, we had five um, highway capacity enhancement projects. Number one was Maryland 97, um, and I'll, there'll be maps later in the presentation, so I'll just go through these quickly. Um, then Maryland 32, third priority Maryland 26, Maryland 140 corridor improvements, and then Maryland 27 corridor improvements down in the Mount Airy area. So the first priority last year was Maryland 27 from Bachman's Valley Road to 140. And uh, I'm not gonna read the project scope, but you can see the project scope. What's important here was last year, um, this was moved from the number two priority to the number one priority by the county commissioners. And the reason for that was that first breakout project. So for all these capacity enhancing projects, the thought of getting the entire project is pretty crazy. <laughs> so we, we provide breakout projects for the state to consider, and there's been some success in that, mm -hmm. particularly this year. So a project isn't even eligible to be in the CTP unless it has a feasibility study. So we kept year after year saying Maryland 97 was our second priority, but then it wasn't even eligible to be in. So we moved it to number one, and said that our breakout project that we were requesting was a corridor study, a feasibility study. And the good news is the requested study is being funded currently by the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act increases and $500,000 has been included in the proposed C CTP. And I'll just share with you, during staffing, during the discussions, that's huge because we got a lot of pushback from specific delegates that we needed to, maintain um, the uh, priority list as is because if we move things around then nobody knows what our priorities are and everybody's gonna get frustrated the fact is in order for this study to take place we had to move it up to um, priority number one and even though the delegation said yeah that may not be so this is telling us it is so and we are getting funded to have this study being done uh, because we moved it up to priority number right. one. Um, you know, we, we don't want to just move things from out of nowhere into this priority list, but there has to be a strategy moving forward, and uh, it's got to be all of us saying <coughs> Bless you. why this is so important. I mean, enough. in my area, 3226 are very important, but for the county, this was much, not much more, this was more important to kickstart than, you know, Correct. 3226. So. So that feasibility study will begin. Linda and I are participating. Mm -hmm. Public Works is, um, I believe, the Department of yep. Economic Development. Yes. So there'll be plenty of county participation on that study. 
Um, and again, this is a map just showing the boundaries of the ultimate project. So the second priority, um, which had for years been the first priority, is uh, Maryland 32 from Maryland 26 south to the Carroll County line. Um, this, again, has been one of the county's highest priorities for many years. Um, in 2018, MDOT conducted, again, with county participation, what's called a Planning and Environmental Linkages Pell study, which identified potential improvement concepts to address identified needs at specific locations. Basically, what they found was the ultimate improvement of that road would not be needed in the time frame, the, I believe it was mm -hmm. a 30-year time frame. And they did use current development. They used what was in the Freedom Plan as, as well as other information from us. It was found that the ultimate improvements would not be necessary, so they identified some breakout projects. And uh, the second breakout project that we identified in our priority letter, the breakout project for design funding from Second Street to Main Street, more good news. Um, the design for this project is being fully funded with the IIJA increases and has been included in the proposed CTP. So that's another win. That's a definitely good news story. Yeah. And so on the left side, you'll see the, the boundaries, the ultimate boundaries of the project, but then on the right is the breakout project. So the third priority, and this has been for many years, is Maryland 26 from 32 east to the reservoir um, in prior years. The project was to uh, widen the roadway from four to six lanes. Again, a SHA study was conducted in 2020 that found that that ultimate um, improvement wasn't feasible or necessary. So that study also identified some breakout projects. And last year's letter identified a breakout project that had been included in that study. So you'll see that in last year's letter. And there's the boundaries of that project. So the fourth priority is Maryland 140 corridor improvements from the county line to just about Kays Mill Road. Um, the ultimate improvements include a four-lane divided highway, a full interchange at Maryland 91 with additional auxiliary lane east of 91 and access management improvements. An initial breakout <coughs> project has been identified for several years, which is design funding for the intersection. And um, that is the jug handle design for westbound traffic. And this project is now funded for full design. And on the next page, if you're wondering what a jug handle is, <laughs> I included that map. It's basically as you're going westbound, making a right to go left. They don't want left-handing turn movements because that's where there's been a lot of um, conflicts <laughs> and, and crashes. So this is really to have a continuous flow of, of sorts and without having that left turn movement. Um, even with it being a left air signalized, there's still a lot of conflict um, there. Our commissioner from New Jersey should be an expert on that. Absolutely. Yes, yes. right hand it's turns not a only. Roundabout or anything. <laughs> no. Yeah, so that is funded for design. And then the last capacity um, enhancement project was added just last year at the request of Mount Airy. These are Maryland 27 corridor improvements from the Carroll County line to Lacier Road. Um, this includes widening of the roadway to a consistent four lanes. Some of it is four lanes, as you're aware. Um, dedicated turn lanes, signalized traffic control, boulevard separation of lanes, and controlled <coughs> intersections to allow pedestrian crossings. Um, there were no breakout projects at this point identified or prioritized. And again, as I said, this was at the request of Mount Airy, so the commissioners added it in last year. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's the boundaries of that project. So there's also in the letter, you'll see two urban reconstruction, what's called streetscape projects, um, Maryland 851 in Sykesville and Maryland 31 in New Windsor. These have been in four years. There's been some gradual project or progress made on some aspects of them, but they are not yet funded. And these are our last two towns to receive streetscape or what we're calling urban reconstruction projects. The most recent one that's been complete um, is Maryland 30 in Hampstead, which has now been taken over by the town and is Main Street Hampstead. It's no longer Maryland Business 30 once that streetscape was complete, and that's because of the bypass. So when they received the bypass, that was the deal that the town made at the time. So for the Sykesville, Maryland 851, the concept was completed years ago, but it is not funded for design. Um, the road classification was upgraded to um, 
major collector to make it more feasible or more likely to get federal funding. That was a few years ago. It's currently funded for drainage improvements and they're coordinating with the county on water and sewer upgrades. But again, the streetscape hasn't been funded yet. And there's the, that's the um, boundaries of that. We have been working with the towns and we, mm -hmm. Linda and I and our liaison have a meeting with the town um, about the letter to see if there's anything else. They indicated they might want to revise some language for this year. And we sent information out to all of our towns um, asking, you know, is there anything they see? How do they want to participate? And we're also meeting with Manchester as well. They've reached out and said, yes, they'd like to have some discussions as well. Now, part of 851 is Howard County. This would not, we're not requesting. Correct. This have is we, just in the Carroll section. Right. Have we even had a conversation with Howard County? I'm not regarding 851. Um, no, we have not. Because, um, the feeder going from 32 down, that's all Howard County mm -hmm. until you get to cross the bridge. Mm -hmm. But that's 851. Um, I wonder if uh, you can reach out to them and see if they can, if we can leverage them as well. Uh, you know, because it's 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 one road. It just happens to split the two counties. That's a great idea. Well, thank you. And that's actually a really important point is that roads like that, that we have this kind of cross jurisdictions it right. is really important I, and, and we will go ahead and reach out uh, to talk to them yep. about this Thanks. as well. And uh, just to clarify, you've, you've, uh, you mentioned you reach out to the municipalities, so I don't know in the last time you had contact with the folks in Mount Airy, but mm -hmm. if you're having any issues there or getting a hold of folks. They have not me. gotten back to us yet. They received our request mm -hmm. several weeks ago, but we didn't give them a deadline. They're probably talking okay. about it. Yep. Um, right, and again, thanks. they had success last year in getting <laughs> Maryland 20, 27 yep. added, so we definitely do work with them. Thank you. Um, so the second streetscape project that has been in for many years is New Windsor Main Street. Um, again, as most streetscape projects, it's sidewalks, enhancements to bike ped accessibility and um, road improvements, roadway improvements. This is currently needing to be coordinated with the replacement of water lines and we're waiting to get an update from New Windsor regarding the progress of that. But last year's letter noted that they had been working with SHA on that. And that's really common. A lot of our municipalities mm -hmm. have tried to time some of their um, underground infrastructure uh, improvements and repairs and replacements with these streetscape projects. So it doesn't make sense to come in after and dig it up if it's already going to be dug up let's go in and see if there's any repairs that need to be made so this is very common again the map showing the boundaries of this project so um i'm just going to very quickly talk about transit we include this in the letter but it reflects your um annual transportation plan which stacy was here several weeks ago talking about mm -hmm. and if you have a request you'll have a public hearing on february 23rd and ours our request always reflects what she's asked for. So um, this year it's operating funding, transit facility improvements that are security related for replacement buses, 10 replacement tablets, and preventative maintenance funding. But again, that's pretty much outside of, we include it, but it's really um, mm -hmm. part of the ATP. And you'll hear this also referred to as our LOTS funding, locally operated transit system. So if you hear LOTS, that's also what our, our trailblazer is. In. So the last, I believe the last, are our trail projects. These two, again, have been in for years. We will be talking with Jeff about keeping the Governor Frank Brown Trail in. It has been in the same status for many years since the readiness center was even being discussed. There's security concerns about it. And um, I don't believe there's been any progress made, but we'll talk to Jeff on that, about that, as well as the Westminster Community Trail. Um, there's, there hasn't been anything, I believe, this year that's been done on that. So additional concerns that the commissioners wanted to include every year near the end of the letter is other priorities, although they don't want them to be their top priorities, which is Maryland 140 from Sullivan to Market, and that's the ultimate um, project that they're talking about there. Also safety concerns at both um, Maryland 31 and Medford Road, as well as Maryland 26 and Johnsville Road. And then last year, Public Works requested that we mention the Maryland 140 turnaround for the Northern Landfill Safety Enhancements. 
And the reason we do these towards the end um, and why those other priorities are at the top is because the consolidated transportation plan top priorities are reserved for projects over a certain dollar amount. I want to say what's the minimum? Five million dollars. Um, they have to meet that threshold. The rest of these projects can come out of other pots of funding, um, resurfacing, safety um, improvements, those types of um, funding sources through MDOT. So that's why they're kind of reserved for the end. We don't want these to be muddled in with our top priorities for those major capacity enhancing projects. Nonetheless, these are still of concern and this is a good way to get MDOT's attention on these roadways. Okay, and the last thing that you'll see on the last page of last year's letter, it was in for the first time last year, um, the, um, I'm sorry. BMC, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, board included language at the request of BMC, the Baltimore Reg Regional Transportation Board, supporting coordinated efforts to identify and support priorities across jurisdictional boundaries and conveying to MDOT the multi-jurisdictional approach to developing priorities. Kind of going back to the conversation we were having. Yeah about working with Howard County. So it was some general language worked out by BMC that the jurisdictions were asked to include in their letters. Mm -hmm. Five of the region's jurisdictions did include the suggested language in the letters, and uh, Carol was one of them. Yep. And that's really one of the main tenets of the BRTB, Baltimore Regional Transportation Board, is supporting each other with projects, um, especially ones of regional in implications. Right. So next steps, based on any input we get, um, from you today regarding um, any changes you would want to see in priorities or additions or anything else. We will um, continue working on redrafting the priority letter. We will present um, it to you for further discussion. I would probably think it's going to be two meetings in March. We'll bring you a draft letter and then if you have any more comments we can come back for its approval. That's a lot of times what we've done. Um, and then we will have Mike Fowler get the signatures of the delegation and we will transmit it to the secretary by, or you will transmit it to the secretary by April 1st. So that is the... Okay. Um, bridge, bridge projects. The, the state evaluates our bridges for maintenance, replacement, et cetera, et cetera. The county stays out of that? No, we put those in the TIP, which is uh, all these another, little, acronym. another acronym. That's another funding source that's federally federal funds and so we put in our tip every year and we do amendments to that and we work with public works on that but that is what covers our bridge and bridge replacement so so is route 91 part of that the two bridges i know a lot of people are concerned about that's going to be a pretty massive deep detour for a long period of time when the two bridges on 91 are worked on. I would have to look at our TIP improvement program mm -hmm. to see if the Maryland 91 bridge is a part of that. I, it's not part of the jug handle, but it might be a separate section within the TIP improvement. And, and that was going to be my next question is, do we try to piggyback some of those for widening of 91 or the jug handle or whatever? Um, and I don't know how the state perceives that. Um, so that would be something I would want to confer with Public Works on because they're the main um, uh, agency that's responsible for working with the TIP program. Okay. Because it's right. a, it's in a repair. Right, but they're state yeah. roads, yeah. so the, there's the, we don't have any responsibility for the bridges on state roads. No. Yeah. No. Just so you know, and and then the um, just what the county so the um, county is responsible for bridges that are under 20 feet. Um, for the li for all of the funding and most of the funding for bridges that are over 20 feet long on our roads um, are uh, there's that's why they're in that yep. tip program and they're um, federally funded to a great extent mm -hmm. right so yeah, yeah uh, I just particularly concerned about 91 because the detour will probably affect some county roads mm -hmm. and and it's that's it's going to be a long period of time I'm glad to see their piggyback and at least they're not closing it doing one and then closing and doing the other <laughs> but uh, but yeah and then I didn't know if we try to like I say if we wanted that section widened if we've looked at the design of that and said we, you know if you're gonna replace the bridge make it for the future it's but certainly I was just curious certainly a valuable conversation mm -hmm. to have yeah. and yeah. Um, maybe next fall uh, in at the tour when you're sitting there with I don't know the <clears throat> secretary of a uh, new secretary's name. We, we'd have held. Thank you. Um, you can bring that up <laughs> too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're in discussions with the municipalities right now about some of their. Yes. 
because right, I know that that uh, Union Bridge or the mayor of Union Bridge had mentioned to me that they have an I mean a, a project with the road they'd like to do, and of course Tawny Town with the the bypass is always a uh, is always a big one. Um, I will, and I, I thought this was informational only today, so I apologize for not it's having fine. more information for you guys today, but I will get uh, information uh, from Union Bridge for you, um, and I will also get some additional information from uh, Tawny Town for you as well. And I, I know the, uh, the bypass has been an, an ongoing thing with Tawny Town, um, but you know, it's been 50, 60 years that it's been talked about. And I know from, from that perspective that you know, having, having it somewhere, you know, listed somewhere, even if it's not a priority at this particular moment, helps uh, Tawny, or Union Bridge for that matter, knowing that it's listed somewhere gives them uh, you know, weight to, to proceed after the project. I know over the course of the last year, Tawny Town has gone ahead and purchased some property that would fall under the bypass corridor. So they are, you know, both towns are genuinely uh, interested in pursuing the project. So I just want to make sure that those are on the, the radar as well. And if, if I remember correctly, it's, it's one of the roads that actually goes straight into Union Bridge. I'm trying to remember. 77? 77. Okay, I think that, yeah, I think you're right. That's, that's their main street, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right, okay, right. And because it's a, I think it's a county road that goes straight into. Uh, it's. Um, is it Karras? Oh, I think it's 75. Wait, for Shepherd's Mill? Let me, let, let me double check on it. The T intersection yeah. right there by right. the bridge that, um, it's 77 that's, yeah. that's main street. And um, Seven, maybe it's 75 I, then. I can't, I'll have to look, I'll have yeah. To look. Maybe it's 75. Right, but I just wanted to make sure that, that yeah, those were at least, you know, brought up because, again, you know, Tawny Town is serious about pursuing the bypass. Union Bridge is serious about, you know, f well, again, I forget exactly what the issue is with that road. I think it's some, something to do with the maintenance of the road, I think. But I will, I will get the information. Absolutely. For you. That'd be great. Thank you. And, and I want to personally thank Tawny Town for doing one of the first streetscapes and coordinating with their water line. A few engineers, Kibler Construction, C.J. Miller, and a lot of citizens learned a lot. Watching yes, they did. That yeah. was, you're correct, um, one of the very first big Main Street projects we've done in the county. That was rough in some ways. But a lot of good stuff that came out of it in terms of learning and the, the end product, so. Yep. Okay, what else? Both are called 75. 75. 75. 70. So. Any other conversation? This is good information. It's a. So, our next steps will be to continue to work with our agency mm -hmm. partners and the towns on making the updates yep. um when we meet again I, I we'd like you to consider are these your still your top priorities is there anything else you'd like to see um in this letter that we're missing or something that you feel has already passed and should be removed um and then we will redraft that and come back to you for final approval and sending it to the delegation okay um and i don't know um in, in the past we've sent the delegation um uh, draft. I don't know how you all would like to also we consider working. Actually, in this. Oh no, it's not. Yes. Yeah, we they, send they them just that. No, but beforehand. So they. Oh. Yeah, we send them a draft typically beforehand for them to, oh. you know, right. peruse and then go from there. But we'll. So if you want to do that, maybe after the next time yes. right. when you have we'll, yeah. your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. Not not now. Not. No. This is for our edification, consumption, and then decision. So, uh, so appreciate the edification at this time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you very, much. very much. Have a great day. Okay. You too. And I will see you later. <laughs> One o'clock. So, uh, procurements. Um, we have three procurements, uh, three Ford Explorers, a mill and paved parking lot and entry road at Union Mills and PFAS Engineering Support Services. Are we not being presented or how are we? This is the way we're, we're gonna start doing this. If, if you continue to like it, they just batch them all together with one recommended motion to approve them. They're all in the budget. They're all approved budgetary items. No additional funds are necessary. And we don't have to do it today. I think we need to reconsider how we're doing these this is a lot of important things and uh no offense to length of our meetings we spent a half hour talking about 10 grand in interest i think we can spend 15 minutes talking about purchases in the future well, I, I understand i gotta get i, I gotta get you know union you know some some level of that's why i say we yeah we need to talk about it when everybody's here and um 
So I, I, I think no, so I, one thing I I'd like it. to say yeah, please. about this, we should talk as a group when we're legally allowed to talk as a group. An individual trying to change the agenda after it's established is wrong. I haven't done it. I've almost said a bad word. I've complained about it, um, <laughs> but it's just uh, these are very important topics, and, and I'm okay with one motion today, but they're so different, and uh, I think they uh, definitely um, <coughs> should have discussion. Well, Commissioner, if you want, we'll take them one at a time then. How's that? Well, it, it's nobody's here to talk about them, so I've read it, so yeah, let's do the, I'm talking about the future. Okay, but let, I mean, you have a, yeah. yeah I, I, I support the effort to try to streamline things, um, and I am prepared to make motions on items seven and eight today. However, uh, I would request that we uh, table item nine for a later date where we can speak with the director because I do have questions and concerns about this PFAS issue. And then on that particular item, those that, that money is at a reserve contingency, not, not budgeted. But again, I, I want to voice my support for trying to streamline things, but I, I can completely understand your concern, Commissioner Kyler, that these things are important. You're right. Yeah. Um, but uh, Did you fine. come in on cue or something, or what, what happened there? Thank you. <laughs> that, that, that really was. I mean, unless you <laughs> heard it from outside. If you wish. I did not text him or call that, that him. Was, that was pretty impressive, though, walking in. Um, anyway, so I'm prepared to move forward. But uh, so well, welcome we, other comments. We have a motion for two of them. Yeah, I think we right. probably have to make this separately. But yes, sir. So, motion okay, two. so I have a motion to move forward and approve the awards for items seven which is purchasing three ford explorers um from apple ford for the amount of hundred ninety three thousand thirty three dollars and fifty nine cents and then i have a motion to accept item eight which is union mills homestead paving project and is there a cost associated with this mm -hmm. uh thirty nine thousand nine hundred dollars Okay, I apologize. Where did I miss that? Oh, that's okay. It's on the, uh, I think it's the third page. Oh. <sighs> yeah, because I'm, cause I'm confused because I got PFAS. Yeah. Oh, it's Places a little on there somewhere? Further back up in the packet. So you have the, you have the first page, which is the, the yeah, motion, then you have... Page, unless you're yeah. missing something. Then you have the explorers, and you have Union Mills. Yeah, I, I'm missing it. That's all right. You're missing it? I can. You want a copy? Um, no, it's all good. I, I mean, as long as we're. Yeah, I was missing this. Okay, the uh, paving for uh, thirty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars. So I have a motion for those two. Is there a second for those two? Second. I got a motion. I got a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Now with motion or excuse me, with uh, item number nine. PFAS engineering, thank you. You PFAS engineering support services. Um, Chris, would you like to come up and uh, walk us through this and we can go from there. Yeah, I can certainly go through a background for you or if you have specific questions, happy to answer those. So I'm happy to go either way you like. Yeah, I, go ahead. I mean, I, if you, if you, uh, up to the other commission I mean I think you've done a good job of trying to explain to us this is a growing issue within the county in mm -hmm. fact I live within Mount Airy and we all received letters a couple weeks ago about mm -hmm. the the parts per million content mm -hmm. of PFAS in the water um, my, my concern with this in issue here and the, the funding of these engineering projects is where where does this end is this going to ever stop once it starts um, we're not budgeted for this so right so the answer is we don't know that's that's part of the problem right so the EPA is working on developing regulations MD is going to follow suit um, but what they've indicated is that we need to treat this as a, a public health concern and, and and look to start addressing it and the immediate issue that we have to address is that we have ongoing engineering design going on at the Public Safety Training Center 
And um, as part of that, we want to make sure that those engineering documents take into consideration the contamination on site. And so that's where we need the specialized engineering expertise that Tetra Tech would bring to the table. So that's an immediate need that we need those folks to assist us with finalizing these construction drawings so that they can move forward and we don't make a, um, a bad situation worse. And, and we need to keep moving forward regardless of, it's hard to judge if we're going to meet EPA's uh, design and, mm -hmm. or specs or whatever when they haven't done it yet, but we need to do that. And you, you yes. feel we need to get this moving. Yes, yes. We have uh, grant funding that goes towards the site construction that requires construction work in FY24. So we're rapidly trying to get those engineering drawings complete. And the issue is, is that it's around that same time. We expect the EPA to come out with regulations any day now. Um, I've heard March is, is probably when we're going to see them. So we need to know what, figure out what the implications of those regulations might be and make sure that we're not doing anything detrimental on that site where we may have to do work in the future um, to remediate it. And where it says transfer from, from the reserve for contingencies uh, and no additional funds will be required. Is it a separate action that needs to be taking place or is it just a transfer? No, I know. no separate action is necessary. So, so the money's already there for this. It's just being slid around. Yeah. Yes. In technical terms. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to use that in budget deliberations mm -hmm. from now on. Slid around. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, I, does I, that make you comfortable? I, again, given the letters that people are receiving, everybody in the town of Manor, I got the same letter. I, I guess you could reliably add this to the list of things that as the Board of Commissioners we're going to have to start getting in front of I'm not comfortable with the whole with the whole issue right now because I don't feel as though I know what the true issues are the totality of it where it stops where it begins how much money mm -hmm. is this going to cost mm -hmm. to fix this problem mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's probably something that we we need to talk about in a, at a future date if you're telling me that you need to get this money allocated for these engineering plans in order for us to take advantage of a grant. So there's mm -hmm. a time sensitive yes. aspect of this. Yes, there is. Yeah. But I think I think I can see sort of the heads nodding. I mean, this sounds like this yes. is something we this might project, have to put together. We need to move. I think mm -hmm. so too. Okay. Yes. Some sort yeah. of I don't want. I hate the term task force, but I mm -hmm. mean just some sort of working group on mm -hmm. this whole issue because yeah. when people get letters in the mail saying, "Hey, guess what? Your water is might not be safe." Mm -hmm. That was a lot of people are getting these letters. Yes, and it's a big concern. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. Um, it, it's it's hard to comprehend. It's hard to understand um, because there's still so much discussion about it. Mm -hmm. You know, where is the end in sight and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to get more understanding as we move forward. Um, and I also agree. Um, with you, Commissioner Kyler, doing this blankly, you know, is a little difficult. And the procurement process is not very time consuming, you know, when they're at the table discussing it. So I think we can, we can package it together, three or four or five, whatever, but having the expertise, because I'm not an expert on what truck is used for what and typical yeah. questions, what are we doing with the old trucks, are they going up for auction, how long they've been used, thank you for keeping that truck in place for 25 years when it should have only had a life cycle of 10. So if so. you don't want to do them batch, which is totally your decision, this is the direction I was given last week, we could change it back to the way we do it, I don't, yeah. The, I would recommend that we change it back to the way we were doing it where it's to, divided by department rather than yeah. by yes. procurement because it's more efficient for staff that way because staff may have the same staff member may have a grant at the same time that they have a procurement um, and so that way you know that those staff members can come in and they can go out and you can hear you know and so if, and if that's okay yeah. if you want to go I, back I, to the non-streamlined version yeah, it it takes more of their time than it does ours but I think it's justified, and in this case, if 
you wouldn't have been paying attention and showed up this probably would have been tabled for a week oh he, we, we you know we're, so we're on it no. so <laughs> it's I'm, I'm sorry for your time uh, but no, i'm we're willing to do it and i think it 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 really helped that's okay. fine we're we're fine so we'll just okay. leave it the way it was yep right. is, that, is that okay I, is that the consensus i think yes yeah, I'm, I'm willing to go along with yeah. that that's fine uh, yeah i don't i guess i lost that today we right. didn't save any time i mean you know i understand yeah it's just uh, i get confused when nobody's sitting there and i can have that mm -hmm. conversation especially when we're procuring things sometimes we procure things and it may be a one or two year license and i'm like okay why not do it for five years and why not have that um conversation um I don't want to say I'm so agnostic to it, but because I do like that interaction, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go along with what folks want on this one. So, yes. Okay. Sounds like. It. Let's. You want to make the motion on this? On this yeah. one? Oh no, that's okay. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nice one, You've been doing it. Sure. Uh, move uh, to award the contract for a PFAS engineering Try. support services in the amount of fifty thousand dollars. And I assume I have to second it. Second. Yes, you do. Yes, sir. Okay. You do. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any further discussion on this? Seeing here none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Chris. Magically appearing like. Yeah. No. <laughs> Is there any uh, comments on the phone? I've got no one waiting online, sir. Okay. Wonder when you come on up. Um, for open admin, does anybody have anything for open admin? The only just the normal signing things. The only comment I do want to make is week after next, in two weeks from today, on February twenty third at six PM, we are going to have a public hearing in the Reagan room, uh, room zero zero three downstairs for those that want to attend. Um, we will also um, have it uh, online, I believe. Excuse me? Having a public Sorry, hearing online? You so people, yes, sir. Okay, so people who want to call in. Will it be able to be oh. hybrid, Chris? I you tell me. Just be I, can, I, can make, I can make that happen. Okay, thank you. So it will be both uh, hybrid and in person, and it has to do with uh, the public hearing regarding a potential moratorium for six months on solar uh, projects in agricultural properties. Is that close enough? Tim? The agricultural zone. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, move to week number one. Let's see. Monday, February 13th is Maryland Association County's Rural County Coalition Bill Review. Commissioner Kyler and I will be attending, Commissioner Gordon at 7 p.m. will be attending the Westminster City Council meeting. On Tuesday, happy Valentine's Day, there will be a Carroll County, Carroll Community College Board of Trustees meeting where we will all be participating in the John B. Yingling dining room. On Wednesday, February 15th, Commissioner Kyler and I will be uh, at MACO. At 5 p.m., there's a Carroll Community College Board of Trustees meeting where Commissioner Kyler will be attending. And at 7 p.m., the Emergency Services Advisory Council where Commissioner Kern will be attending. On Thursday, February 16th, we have presentation of the bus patrol program. Uh, Sheriff Deweese and his team will be coming in to share with us uh, about that program. We have a request approval for annual plan for fiscal year 2023. Carroll County Bureau of Housing oh, displayed, wait, to be displayed for 45 days. We have to, we have to publicly this? make aware that the plan is out and available for for uh, public comment. The annual five. plan, mm -hmm. what, but what is the annual plan? This is the housing annual plan. Oh, so okay. The, yeah, it's so the housing annual plan. Yeah, yeah. That's going to be up. Okay, got it. Um, and then we have rezoning two twenty eight Aldersburg Investors LLC. 
and then if there's any procurement of personal care we'll services we'll changing that so we'll be yeah. changing that okay <laughs> um in the afternoon we have updates from land resource management from shepherd pratt from human services programs of carroll county from the circuit court and also then the state's attorney's office i thought we were limiting to just well, the four but these no. were previously okay. scheduled okay. so um you know do, do you want the five or so. i think i fear that the state's attorney and the judge may take a long time so i think we just okay i would suggest you just do four okay and not do um mr hine yep um on saturday homes for our troops key ceremony where commissioner garen will be participating uh saturday morning sunday commissioner vigliotti has the podcast and, and uh, i apologize what did we say about item six through ten we're eliminating some we're not what, what, staying what? As right. is. we'll be eliminating some hmm? just numbers yeah. number six we'll take out number six unless you want it i mean i just think the state's attorney and the sheriff i mean oh, the state's I, attorney and the judge judge will be rather long okay. i'm thinking on monday february 20th the county offices will be closed in observance of president's day uh district five night in annapolis commissioner kyler is scheduled to attend and if others are attending just let Vivian sent everyone an email right. with the time <coughs> location and things I'm i will not be there vivian sent everyone an email with the time and location oh for, for that for district five right yes. yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah i've rsvp'd yep. I'm, I'm fine and then mako uh rural Co county coalition bill review uh i will not be participating in that at 6 30. correct so you may or may I, not so yeah, i don't see how i right. will i'll be so it may just theory, neither one of us and drinking not a bad thing on tuesday planning and zoning commission commissioner gordon will be uh, attending down 003 commissioner gordon and kyler will be participating in the veterans advisory meeting at 2 p.m that day and then commissioner kyler will be participating in the reese volunteer fire company meeting on wednesday uh commissioner kyler and i have mako on thursday the 23rd currently what is scheduled um annual transportation plan fy24 annual transportation plan that's if needed that's the um the the transit plan and you, you remember um stacy graham came a couple three weeks ago okay and um so if we get requests for the public hearing got it then that will be that okay but we shall know um before that whether we'll have and then a follow-up if needed if we don't make a decision next week on the rezoning case number 228 down in eldersburg investors 1045 uh that is nothing that's no longer right yeah that's the public hearing moratorium right that's the that was the mistake that's the a mistake misprint so that afternoon currently we have scheduled the arc with mr road um carroll soil conservation district carroll county youth services bureau miss lynn davis and university of maryland extension those four are scheduled at this well, there time three more on the other and there's side there's three more on this side uh, public schools rape crisis intervention services carroll county and flying colors of success yeah we may need to modify this do you feel you have any, any need to hear from the public schools i'm not sure why this? we need to hear from the public schools since we just and received the, the their pur budget. purpose of these is a 10 15 minute update or, or overview of what you whoever you are you know rape crisis or whatever so, do do you feel you need that from the school system I mean, my thought personally would be to um because we're going to have the public hearing and that's going to take up the you know, late afternoon to the evening my suggestion would be not to have any of these at all this particular afternoon or to move them to the morning if i don't know oh, if well, yeah if, they, if they'll fit in the morning sure yeah because a, two, of the, two of the two of the 
two of the three things, all at the moment, all you really have is the legislative liaison that day. I mean, hearing from the public, hearing from the public schools, it is not necessarily a bad thing to get them in front of us to talk about the numbers and that kind of stuff. But I mean, that's I I know that, um, but it's more geared for all of us being on Simshi Music. So I'm going to defer it to my colleagues on the right and left. And I think we need to be cautious. If we have said out loud that we wanted to see everyone, we start excluding people, um, my, my little feelings would get hurt. Oh, okay. You know? But I, if we don't care, we don't care. But. Um, Oh, my suggestion is not to hear from them at all, just not on this particular not that day. day. No, right. I know, it, but and but uh, Commissioner Rothstein saying maybe not at all, and I'm okay with either. But and and this is two weeks out, so now is a good time to make the decision. Yep. I was just one I thought you could cut out if you wanted to, but um, but if but I, that was only. Yeah, I I mean I don't care. You could you could have them in the morning if the people I'm, were available. I'm agnostic about moving them around, but I do feel as though it's a good idea to, to have people continue to come in front of us. And I, and I think when you give people 15 minutes, you sort of force them to condense some of their thoughts, and, and that might that's be beneficial hope. to us in the long run. At least we that's hope the, that's the that's case. That's the hope. That's the hope. <laughs> so do you want to try to move items 5 through whatever, 11? To the morning. Yep. So the consensus is move two to the morning, and we'll push the others out to the next day. Yeah. Is that move it? how many? You said two. I could. no. I said, do you want to move them to the morning? Oh. I meant all of them. Oh, I thought you said earlier you thought two would fit. You think more than that? Oh yeah. There's nothing in the There's morning. Only, you only have the legislative liaison on that morning. Because the other things are if needed, and they and probably will not happen. Almost assuredly, no need for the annual transportation plan and Resuming, um right. and and the discussion decision if you have it uh on the rezoning on 228 i wouldn't think that would take because it's just the board gonna have it the week before it's being presented a week yep. before right, so yes yeah, so, you know, i you know maintain what i said clear the afternoon if we can move them elsewhere to the morning yeah yep okay okay 6 p.m as shared earlier There'll be a public hearing on the solar moratorium downstairs in the Reagan room 003. I will not be participating in the Carroll County Equal Justice Forum, and I don't expect Mr. Tyler either, since no. we'll be in the right. other public hearing. Nothing scheduled on Friday, Saturday. On Sunday, February 26th, Commissioner Kyler has the podcast. I need a motion to recess for 12 minutes. <laughs> and then motion we'll, to move. We will reconvene. Okay, I got Second. a motion. Second. Any discussion? Did you hear none? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.